Welcome to Learn It Training. The exercise files for today's course are located in the video description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to PowerPoint 2021 Introduction. My name is Mo Jones and I'm happy to guide you through this tutorial for our introduction to PowerPoint 2021. We'll cover the basic features while exploring the visually refreshed interface. I look forward to exploring what 2021 has to offer with you. Remember, this is an interactive tutorial. I will occasionally remind you to pause the video and practice what you've learned. Welcome to PowerPoint 2021. I just launched my PowerPoint 2021 application and I am presented with the start screen. So this is our nice start screen here. There are a lot of things that we can interact with here, but I do want to point out there are three main areas that we want to kind of focus on here. Notice that we have a big open tab over here on our top left. We also have a new tab here. And we also have our home tab. I do want to point out we're currently active on our home tab as well. So what are some of the things that we can do here on our home tab? Well, we can go ahead and open up a new presentation. We can go ahead and search for a presentation, or we can interact with this menu here, which allows us to take a look at our recent files, our pin files, or any files that have been shared with us as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my recent files here. So I'll click on recent. And notice it shows me all the recent files that I've been working on. I just kind of go down this list here. It shows the newest file first that I've worked on and the oldest file as well. As you can see, I've been working on some files today as well. And you may have a longer list than I do, and that's okay. You can always go ahead and click on more presentations and that will give you a more exhaustive list of all the presentations that you have saved, whether on your computer or in your cloud space as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my pinned files. So right now I do have one file that's pinned and pinning a file is pretty, it's pretty cool. If I go back to my recent files here, notice as I mouse over each file, I have the option here to pin it. Maybe I'll go ahead and pin this file here. I'll just do a quick check, click on my pinned files. And there it is. Pinning files is a very, very good idea when you want to make sure that you always have access to those most important files there as well. So I can go ahead and take a look at files that have been shared with me. Right now, I don't have anything shared. I am connected with my Microsoft account. And so um, that feature is available if I were to have some files shared with me uh, by my colleagues here as well. I can go ahead and click on the search box here and search for a file. This is useful if you have a lot of presentations and uh, they're just not kind of showing up here on the main window. You can go ahead and type in the name that will bring up the files for you as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at some themes up here. So now we can go ahead and interact with this tab here. We can go ahead and open a blank presentation. We can open up some, um, some pre-built presentations by Microsoft. So it's kind of like a welcome and a small tutorial on implementing 3D. You may recognize these themes over here to the right. These are the built-in themes here uh, for PowerPoint 2021. Let's go ahead and take a look at some more themes. And why would you want to use a theme or a template? So these are the themes that comes with PowerPoint 2021. But if you're looking for a template, you can always interact with this menu here. So there's different types of templates. You have presentations, we have themes, educational, charts, diagrams, business. I'm gonna go ahead and click on a business template, and see what options are there. So these are really pre-built for you. Why would you want to use a template? Maybe you're running out of ideas, maybe you're just kind of stuck on what you want to do. Or maybe you just want to have a really good starting point. Maybe you'll scroll through here and find something that you like, and you'll go ahead and get started with that. This one looks pretty nice, creative presentation. I'm gonna go back here. And you can always search 
for some more online templates and themes as well. I'm going to head over to my, my third tab here, which is my open tab. And notice from here, there's a few things that we can do as well. We can open up some files that are, that are recent. So if I click on here, it will show my recent files that I've opened here as well. I can go ahead and open up files that have been shared with me. Or I can go ahead and open up some files from my OneDrive account. So if I click on here, it shows me my folder. And I can go up a folder level if I want to. So I have my documents, my pictures. I can see my files here as well. I can also go ahead and navigate for files on my computer. Right? So on this PC, if I go ahead and click on here. And this is really nice because it's, it's a lot easier to just kind of come in here and search for your files. Sometimes it's hard to use the computer menu. Maybe you kind of forgot where you had your files. Did I save it in my documents folder or my downloads? Very, very, very difficult sometimes as well. You can go ahead and add a place. I'm already connected to my OneDrive, so I'm pretty good to go. I'll leave that alone. And then finally, if you are just, you want that old Windows menu or that Mac menu, that's fine. You can go ahead and click on Browse. This will open up the dialog box for your computer where you can go ahead and search anywhere on your computer for that file as well. So go ahead, I'm gonna go back to my home tab here. Go ahead and pause this video. Check out some of the themes and the templates. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you were able to go ahead and take a look at some of those themes in the gallery. Maybe you were able to take a look at some of the templates as well. Lots of great features there for you. And maybe you were able to go ahead and pin some files as well. At this point, let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and open up a blank presentation and we're going to jump in and see what PowerPoint 2021 has to offer. Notice I'm still on my home tab and I'm in my new section. I'm going to go ahead and open up a blank presentation here. And the first thing that you notice is that you have this really nice new look here. And some of the words that kind of pop out, it just looks really clean. When you take a look at the ribbon, it looks clear. We have some more neutral tones happening here. And overall, it just looks really smooth and really, really simple as well. So this is our new look. And notice we have some simple icons here. We have some rounded edges on our ribbon. And this is, makes it look really, really nice here as well. And so remember, we have our ribbon, which is really the, the main driving force behind our presentations here. So we have this ribbon which is really a nice way of just condensing all of these commands that we that we really like and love to use in PowerPoint. It was a very, very good solution to kind of condense everything in the form of a ribbon here. And let's just take a quick uh, review of what the ribbon is all about. So notice this is the entire ribbon. So we have several uh, ribbon tabs. So we have our we have our file tab, we have our home tab, insert tab. We have this new drawing tab, which we'll talk about a little later as well. We have our design tab, transitions, animations, slideshow, uh, to record. We have a record tab as well, review, view, and we also have our help tab uh, as well. So the whole concept here is that for each tab, you will have different command groups. So right now I'm on the home tab. And notice I have several command groups. So I have my clipboard group here, which has commands related to our clipboard. So we can paste, copy. We have our slides command group here. We can interact with different slide commands and our all popular font group here that we can interact with and format our text. We have our paragraph command group here as well. And we also have our drawing. And finally, we have our editing command group here as well. So really nice way. We spend most of our time here in the font group. So if I click on my inside of my content placeholder here, it becomes active. And now I can apply some formatting here if I want to. A really cool feature, if I just move my mouse up to the top here in between any of these 
um, ribbon tabs. If I, if I just scroll, I can actually scroll through each ribbon tab, which is really, really pretty cool. So I'm going to go back here. You may be wondering, where is our quick access toolbar? Right? It looks like it's missing. Normally, it's right up here. But uh, this is not our quick access toolbar. These are just some default uh, for, for saving our presentation here. That's a new feature. We want to make sure that we can always save our presentation. So our quick access toolbar is actually now here, which is below our ribbon. So it's right here. As you can see, I've already added some, some commands to my quick access toolbar here. So what is the quick access toolbar? Why would you need it? If you work often in PowerPoint, you already know a lot of the commands that you use often. And instead of just kind of scrolling and, and going through each um, ribbon tab, you can just pin your favorite commands here. So for example, I know that I like to use the, the spell checker often. So I went ahead and added my spell checker here. I like to add, use the bold text feature. So I went ahead and added my, my bold here as well. I'm going to go ahead and add my highlighter by right clicking. And it's as easy as just saying, add it to the quick access toolbar. Yeah. So now I have a few commands. I think I'll keep it simple. If I keep adding it, it's just going to keep growing and growing <laughs> over to my right. So I'll leave it there for now. Uh, we do have the drop down here for the quick access toolbar. So you can all, always go ahead and click on it. And you can add commands right here. So if you want to add some, you can do that. But if you want to remove a command, if I wanted to remove my spell checker, I can just unclick it here. My spell checker is gone. If I want to remove something, I can also right click on the quick access toolbar. And I can say, go ahead and remove this from the quick access toolbar. If you want to move it, you can do that. Click on the menu here. And we can go ahead and say, show this above the ribbon. This will move it above to the top of the ribbon for us. So notice it has moved. Now it's right here at the top. Maybe you prefer it to be there. It's up to you. But go ahead and play around with it. Go ahead and move your quick access toolbar to wherever you want to, to move it. Go ahead and take a look at the, the menu options here. Take a look at each one and see what kind of lives inside of these as well. Play around with them. Customize it. Another thing that we can do over here is we can interact with our ribbon. So we can click on our drop down. Notice from here, we can completely hide the quick access toolbar if we want to. We can go ahead and enter full screen mode if we want to. Or if we want to, we can just go ahead and show the tabs only. One of the great features of PowerPoint, just mousing over often gives you an idea of what the command does. So if we show tabs only, only shows the ribbon tabs. Click a tab to show the ribbon with the commands. We can also go ahead and hide it. And there's a lot of things that we can do. We can uncheck, always show the ribbon, and the ribbon will go ahead and collapse for us. So configure your ribbon, configure your quick access toolbar, pause this video, and come right back. Okay, welcome back. Well, hopefully you were able to go ahead and make some changes to your quick access toolbar and uh, make some changes to your ribbon as well. One of the features that I really like about PowerPoint is our search feature. Notice we do have this search box here at the top of our screen. And this is more than just searching. Normally you think search is searching for a keyword or an item in your presentation, but it's much more than that. It has several layers of, of results for us. We'll go ahead and take a look at that as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and click inside of my search box here. And maybe I want to, maybe I forgot just what themes are all about. And I want to go ahead and add a theme to PowerPoint here. So I'll go ahead and type the word theme and look at what it's doing. It's giving us some really, really nice options here. So for example, it's giving us actions that we can take. It's giving us some additional help. It's giving us this find feature. It's also giving us access to files that refers to a theme. And we're also getting more results. So a lot of different, a lot of different options here. And I really, really like this feature. Let's go through each of them and see what kind of lives there. So again, I'm just going to go in here and type theme. And as far as the actions are concerned, if I just mouse over, 
look, I can go ahead and apply a theme right here. Pretty cool. And notice as I mouse over each theme, it's applying it to my current presentation, giving me a preview of what it would look like. So I can browse through the themes here as well. I can go ahead and look for theme colors. So notice by default, we have the office theme here. Go ahead and change these as well. Okay, so different actions here as well. We can get some help on themes. And so if I were to just go ahead and click on this arrow here, it gives me some different options here. I can change the look and feel of office, right? So just some nice little tutorials there as well. If I wanted to go ahead and look for the word theme in my presentation, I can go ahead and look for it as well. And then there are some files that PowerPoint is searching based on that keyword. Maybe there's a file that um, corresponds to that theme here as well. And if I wanted more options here, I can get more search results such as definitions, images, and more from Microsoft Bing. So if I click on there, it opens up a little sidebar here for me, a side pane, and I can get a definition here. And so here's my definition of a theme. I can get some more suggestions down here, some more tutorials. And so really, it's just a really, really nice feature. If I scroll all the way to the bottom here, I'm getting some media results relating to themes, more help. And then finally, I get some, some web hits here as well. And so what I like to tell people, you know, if you don't know how to perform a task in PowerPoint, maybe you forgot, maybe things moved around, go ahead and use that search bar. You'll be surprised at the results that you'll find. Go ahead and type in the search bar. Go ahead and look for a few uh, different items there and take a look at that menu and take a look at how many different layers of results it will give you. So go ahead and pause this video, play around with the search bar there, and uh, I'll see you soon. Welcome back. Well, now let's go ahead and start talking about developing our presentation here. So for our plan today, we're going to document what we're learning. We're going to create a slideshow to document what we're learning. Each slide will represent a different feature of PowerPoint that we're learning. So right now we're on our title slide. I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a title here. So this is PowerPoint. And the subtitle is waiting for me. I'm just going to go ahead and type the word introduction here as well. Very good. So right now notice we our, our default slide is a title slide, it gives us a title and it gives us a subtitle here. So let's go ahead and insert another slide. There's several ways that we can insert a new slide. Notice right now, I do have the first slide over here in our slide pane. I do have it selected. So if I were to press the Enter key, it would give me an automatic slide here, which is a title and content. I'm going to go ahead and delete the slide by right clicking on it. I'm going to go ahead and delete the slide. But what we want to do, we want to kind of go ahead and make use of the menu. So notice I'm on the home tab here. And in my slides group, I'm going to go ahead and interact with the new slide command here. So I'll go ahead and click on that drop down. And it's asking me now, well, what kind of slide do I want to insert? These are different slide layouts. So this is the title slide, similar to what we, what we have now. We do not want to insert another title slide, right? We want to kind of get going here. We have a title and content, as you can see. We can create a section header. If we wanted to kind of create different sections uh, in our presentation, we can do that as well. We have two content. This is very, very popular. We can have two content side by side with a title. We have comparison. The only difference between comparison and two content is that you get a, a small text box on top of each content uh, placeholder, allows you to add more information there as well. You can add a title only slide. This is beneficial if you, you know, if you want to have a title, but you have a you want to have a lot of room where you can add different types of content, media, and things of that nature as well. If you really want a blank canvas, you do have the option to insert a blank slide as well. The other two that we can insert is a content with caption. This kind of puts things on the left margin for you and leaves the right side to have your content. 
Then we have our picture with caption. Okay. So these are different slide layouts. I'm gonna go ahead and insert my title and my content here. So notice I have my title here and I have what's called a content placeholder. So this big box here is a content placeholder. And as you can see, there's seven th several things that I can insert here. A table, a chart, smart art, 3D models, an icon, video, stock images, or pictures, whether from my computer or from online as well. But before we start typing on this slide, let's we need to start thinking about uh, colors and fonts and effects. Right? What are some of the colors that we want to add to this? Well, when we're talking about colors and fonts and effects, we are talking about design. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my design tab here. Go ahead and click on it as well. And we notice a few things here. So I can go ahead, I can go ahead and insert a theme. And once I insert that theme, I can get additional variance here. So I can have a variation within my, my very own theme. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my row icon here. But before I do, I'm just going to go ahead and mouse over each theme. And it's giving me a nice preview of what it would look like. Okay, so very nice here. If you want to see all of them, just click on the more button here and you can see all of them right here as well. You can browse for more themes if you want to online, but um, these are here. I like Iron Boardroom. I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. And I'll just go back to my title slide to kind of see how that looks. Okay, nice variation of purple there. I'll go back to my other slide. That looks pretty good. I think I'll go ahead and just change the variation there. Maybe I'll take a look at some of the, the variants here that I have access to. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mouse over each one. So this is kind of a greenish effect. Here's a blue. Here's a reddish, orangish. I like this blue. I'll go ahead and select that one. I'll take a quick peek at my title slide just to see how it looks. I think that looks nice. Not too bright, not too crazy, pretty subtle, simple, but very, very nice as well. So now we're ready to go ahead and start working on our second slide here. So go ahead. I want you to go ahead and pause this video. Go ahead and choose a theme and go ahead and add a variant to that theme if necessary. And then come right back and we'll continue to develop our lesson here on slide number two. Okay, so now it's a good time to take a quick pause and take a look at some of our shortcuts here. So we'll give this slide the title of shortcuts. And one thing that we have not done yet is we have not saved our presentation. And we can go ahead and save by, we can press the F12 key. We can also go ahead and press Control plus S and that will save for us. I'm gonna go ahead and press the F12 key here. And it's going to go ahead and bring up my presentation here. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this PowerPoint intro. I'll save that to my documents folder there. Of course, you can always go back to your file tab and press save as well. Uh, Control S will actually save the file for you as well. So the first time you press Control S, it will ask you, where do you want to save the file? And then after it's saved, if you press Control S again, it will just update the file for you. It will update your changes, but it will not op open a, a menu for you as well. Okay. So once again, I did say earlier that uh, we like to spend a lot of time up here in our font group. So we'll take advantage of some of the shortcuts that are in here as well. And so let's talk about bolding. Now, one of the great features here, if you just mouse over bold, it tells you the shortcut right there. So to bold text, you just press Control B. So I'm gonna go here, so bold. I'll go ahead and highlight that. And I'll press Control B, bold it for me. Very good. So Control plus B will do that for us. Uh, we like to have italics. 
as well. And if we just right back up to our font group, Control plus I. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click. This will select all of my text. I'll press Control I. That will italicize that for me. I don't want this to be bold. I'll press Control B and remove the bold from it as well. So Control plus I. And uh, we'll do we'll do underline as well. Not many people use underline anymore just because it kind of looks like an hyperlink, a lot of people think. So control B is for bold, control L is for I, and so control U will be for underline. Let's go ahead and control U that. I'll remove the bold by pressing control B from here as well. And there you go. So there's underline. So we have control plus U gives us underline. Well, what if we want to kind of change the alignment here as well? So notice right now it's, it's, it's left aligned. And we know it's left aligned because if we go up to our paragraph group here, which is our second command group here, we can see right here that it is left justified. But what if we want to go ahead and center our text or maybe align it to the right? We have some shortcut keys as well that we can use for that. So we just go right here. If we want to center, it's control E. So center, align is control plus E. I'm gonna triple click here to select all of my text on that line. I'll go ahead and press control E. Centers that for me, very good. So now what if I want to right justify it? Just mouse over, it's control R. So now I'll put right align. And this is control plus R. I'll triple click again to highlight everything on this line. I'll press control R. And there you go. Those are just some quick shortcuts there. Very basic shortcuts, but they're there for us. They're very, very useful. Let's go ahead. Type some text in this box. If you want to type these, that's perfectly fine. But go ahead and practice some of the common commands over here in our font group and our paragraph group as well. Get some practice, pause the video, and then come right back. Welcome back. Now, let's go ahead and talk about editing text, one of my favorite things to do in PowerPoint, besides animations and transitions. So I'm going to go ahead and head over back to my home tab here. And I'm just gonna go ahead in my slide command group, get a little more practice here inserting slides. This time, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the drop down here. And what I want this time is I want two content. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on two content there. And notice we have two placeholders here that we can interact with as well. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a title. I'll just call this editing text. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write my, my four favorite Microsoft apps here. So I'll go ahead and put Excel. I'll put Word. Put PowerPoint. PowerPoint. And then I'll go ahead and press Enter. And then I'll put Outlook. Very good. Now, notice this is a bulleted list, or depending on the type of uh, theme that you chose. So mine is a bulleted list, and I know that to be true because on my home tab, if I go back to my, to my paragraph, I can look right here and I can see that this list is bulleted here as well. Okay. What if I want to change these bullets? I don't want it to be you know, little triangles. Maybe I want it to be something else. I can go ahead and click on this drop down here and I can get a preview of what they would look like. However, notice only one of my, only my last item there is changing. That's because what I have to do is I have to make sure that I have the entire content placeholder selected. So currently we can see a, a dotted line kind of around my content placeholder here. When I click inside, it's a dotted line. 
What I want to do is I want to move my mouse to the border and then go ahead and click it until I see this solid line. And now I can apply a universal change um, to this content placeholder. So now if I go back to my bullets here, I can go ahead and apply some square bullets, maybe some, some star bullets here. I'll go ahead and apply the stars as well. Very nice. Okay, so this is actually an unordered list. So if it has to do with the bullets, it's an unordered list. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this data over here. I'm gonna right click, say copy. I'm gonna move to my other content placeholder here. And I could just go ahead and press the control V. Or I can just right click. I notice that I have different pace options here. So I can use the destination theme. I can keep the source formatting. I can copy it as a or paste it as a picture or I can just go ahead and keep the text. I'll go ahead and just use the default here. But what if I don't want these to be bullets? I want them to be numbers. Let's go ahead and grab that border, click here. And this time in my paragraph command group, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the numbers here. Now, just like that, I change this from a bulleted list to a numbered list here as well. Well, let's go ahead and apply some formatting here or some editing. And we're just gonna spend some time up here in our font group. And let's go ahead and apply a different font type, size and color for each of our items here. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click Excel. And maybe I'll go ahead and give it the next font in the group, which is this agency. And I'll go ahead and give this maybe that Excel green here, or like this. Go ahead and double click on Word. And notice I have this old mini tool here as well. So if I want to, I can, after I double click, I can actually change it right here if I want to. So maybe I'll go ahead and give this the Algerian font and I'll change the size. I can either change the number here or I can just increase the font size by here. I'll give it 24. Now I'll go ahead and try to give that, that that Microsoft Word blue. Maybe I'll give it this one here. And then PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and grab PowerPoint. This time I'll go back to the menu. And let's see what our next font is here on our list. So we have this font here, which is hard to, hard to pronounce. I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger, maybe. Give it 28. And I'll give this another color here. Orange for PowerPoint. Very good. Finally, I'll go down to Outlook here. And I'll give Outlook the next font on our list here, which is Arial. And maybe I'll make this 20. And then I'll give this a different shade of blue here than my Microsoft Word. Maybe a darker. There we go. And so there you go. We're able to go ahead and just apply different formatting to our text here. Let's go ahead and insert a text box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go head over to my insert tab here. And I'm going to go ahead and insert a text box. Okay. So to insert a text box, you want to head on over to our text command group here. I'm going to go ahead and insert this text box. Inserting a text box is uh, it's a pretty good idea when you just want something to stand out on a slide. And a good thing with a text box, it doesn't really obey the rules. You can put it wherever, wherever you want to without kind of interfering with the other content on our slide here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this down here. Notice you have a little sword looking icon here. So now you have to go ahead and draw that text box. And what I'll do, let's just write the word tips in here. So if I learn any tips along the way, I'll go ahead and just write the tips that I learned in here as well. I do want to point out that because now I'm, I'm clicked on an element such as the text box here, I do get a contextual menu. So if I look up here at the top right of my ribbon, I see shape format. It's almost saying, hey, click on me. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So it's recognizing my text box here as a shape. And there's a lot of things that we can do with it. We can actually apply a shape style.
So if I hover over these shape styles, take a look at how my text box is changing. Maybe I'll move it up here so it's a little easier for us to see, to see how it changes. And if I scroll down, so as you scroll down, you get more options. You go from outline to fill colors. Some of these have uh, fill colors with an outline. So it really depends on what you want to do. Go all the way to the bottom. You have different variations here. Maybe I'll select this one here, this moderate effect, light turquoise accent five. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this down here to the bottom of my screen. And what I'll do, maybe I want to go ahead and align it. Notice that I'm still on this contextual menu here uh, for my shape format. So over here in my arrange, I can go ahead and align this. So I'm gonna go ahead and align it all the way to the bottom. And then I'm gonna go align it all the way to the right, just so that it's kind of out of the way on my slide here. And I want to enter this on the following slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I can save this as the default text box. So again, I just right click on my text box here and right here, four from the bottom, I can set it as the default text box so that when I insert a text box next time, it will look exactly like this, the formatting that I created for here as well. So go ahead, pause the video, insert a text box, give it some, give it some style, write the word tips in there, and just practice taking a look at the different fonts and colors that we have in PowerPoint. And I'll be right back. Very good. Okay, so notice I did add a small tip here. And the tip is that we can save a text box as default. Let's talk about adding graphics. Pictures are a really great way, and graphics are a really great way to make your presentation stand out. So let's go ahead and add some. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a slide here as we have before. Um, this time I want a little more flexibility with my slides. So I'm just gonna select title only so I can have a little canvas to work with. So I can insert some pictures and some shapes and take a look at some of the features that we have available for that as well. So title only, and I'll title this one graphics. Oh. Graphics here. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go up to my insert tab. Earlier we visited this tab when we inserted a text box. Now I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to, I'm getting some recommendations here, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a picture. Now notice when you click on the picture dropdown, you have several options here. So you can insert a picture from your, from your device. We can get stock images um, from, from Microsoft, or we can look for some online pictures here as well. Of course, we do want to be careful with copyright and make sure that we're using um, images with permission. So the best option here is if you own the image, obviously you want to go ahead and upload that. I'll go ahead and, and uh, check out the stock images here as well. So I'll click on stock images here. And maybe I'll grab these guys right here, these two eagles. Okay. But notice we do have several options here to go ahead and insert, right? So we can insert images, icons, cut out people, stickers, videos. Videos are really small GIFs. Um, they're not really that long, but they can help your presentation as well. We have illustrations, we have cartoon people. Let's actually take a look at each of these and see what kind of lives in them. Uh, let's see, so we have just various icons here that we can use to add in. It's pretty safe to add these in. And we have other options here. So we can look for bugs. We can look for sports, business. We have cut out people, which I think is pretty hilarious. <laughs> We've got uh, some stickers. Everybody loves stickers now. So we have lots of stickers that we can use. The library is growing, not that very, not that big right now. And here are those videos I was telling you about, the little GIFs. And if you just kind of mouse over it, it gives you a little preview there. Yeah, it's really nice. Rubber duckies on the water. Uh, we have some illustrations here as well. 
And again, we have a sub menu. So if you wanted to look for um, things related to a, related to a party, you can get a nice cake there. And then finally, you have cartoon people that you can use. So there's a lot of graphics at your disposal here. I'm going to go back to images. And I'm going to insert these guys here into my presentation. Now, as you can see, it opened up really, really big here. It's kind of taking over my entire screen. So what I want to do, obviously, I want to resize this. But just keep in mind, there's different ways that you can resize this. I know a lot of times we want to go ahead and kind of, you know, grab these guys here at the sides or at the top to go ahead and resize them. But when we do that, it kind of changes the balance of the picture. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and grab it from the corners. Okay. So we go ahead and grab it from, grab it from any corner. And as you resize it, it keeps the picture, it keeps the aspect ratio of the picture here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab any, any of these corners. I notice it's just keeping my picture in balance there. I'm going to go ahead and move these guys over here. And if I were to use one of these from the side to the top, notice how it's just kind of smushing my picture there. Oh, well, that's not what I want. Okay. So you want to use one of the corner handles here to resize it. Very good. Now, remember that contextual mini that we saw for that text box earlier? Well, a picture is another element, and so Rightfully so, we also get a contextual menu for a picture. So if we take a look up here, we have our picture format. So notice if I click away from the picture, it goes away. Click back on the picture, it comes back. It's almost telling me, hey, click on me. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do here because there's a lot of features that we can use um, in PowerPoint. And if you have any personal pictures that you want to edit, this is a pretty good ed editor here that you can use for your pictures as well. So we have some adjusting that we can do over here. Uh, we have some different picture styles that we can apply as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those. So we can remove background. This is a really nice tool. We'll come back to this as well. Let's go head over to corrections. Just click on this drop down here and we can sharpen or soften the picture. And as we kind of just mouse over each, it gives us a nice preview of what the picture would look like. Okay, very good. We can adjust the brightness or the contrast. It was very bright here. But really depending on what you want, you can go ahead and, oh, that looks pretty cool. Hmm. Maybe I'll accept this one here. We can recolor it if we want to. So if I click on color, I can apply different shades to it here. Give it a really nice, you know, artistic effect here if I want to. I can make it a, give it a nice variation of gold or green or yellow or blue. But this is great because I'm not clicking on it. I'm just mousing over it and it's giving me a nice preview of what the picture would look like when I'm finished here. It's nice black and white. So really nice options here. We can apply some artistic effects here as well. I like to use this one. Kind of gives you that those glowy edges. It's pretty cool. We have this uh, photocopy option here. We have this blur option up here as well that you can use. And we have kind of this glass, the stained glass look, which is really, really nice as well. And then maybe I'll go ahead and See, I'll select the, the watercolor sponge here. Then obviously you can go ahead and you can set the transparency. Uh, why would you want to set the transparency? Maybe you want to put text to kind of overlay on this picture and you want the text to be visible. So you can go ahead and just set your transparency there. I want to leave it alone here. Um, you can also go ahead and, and change the picture if you want to. You can go ahead and, you know, if that picture no, is no longer relevant for you, you can go ahead and change it. And then if I went too crazy and made too many changes, I want to reset the picture. I can go ahead and reset it here. So I can either reset the picture by discarding all of the formatting that I made, or I can reset the picture and the size. 
Let's just try to reset the picture here. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our Remove Background tool here. So here's our Remove Background tool. And remember, you get this by first clicking on the picture, going to the picture format here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And what this does, this will remove the background. And right now it's doing its best to kind of remove the background here. So I just have to make sure that I grab the heads of my eagles here. So I do have my options up here to kind of, you know, make things right here to include their heads. So I can select whether I want to mark areas to keep or I can mark areas to remove. Most of the background is removed here. That's identified here by this, this pinkish, purplish, lavenderish color. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select areas that I want to keep. And I'll try to draw a uh, picture, draw a little circle around the head here. Okay, getting close. Ready for this guy? Let's see if I have any better luck here. Obviously, if you have a touch screen, this works a lot better. <laughs> I'm trying to do this with a with a mouse. Okay, let's see. All right, getting closer there. I'm not going to waste too much time here. I'm, by no means am I a editing expert, but uh, I'll do the best I can. Okay, and so if I want to, if, if that's fine by me. Maybe I'll remove some of this here. So I'll mark some more areas to remove. But I want some of this to, to be in there as well. Okay. And so if I want to go ahead and say keep all changes, we'll see what that looks like. So the background is kind of removed. Well, most of it. Now I have my eagles here ready to soar, ready to fly. Very, very good. Okay. Excellent. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and insert Go ahead and insert a, let's see, we'll insert a shape here. We have several shapes that we can insert as well. So I'm gonna go back to my insert tab and under the illustrations here, I have shapes, some built-in shapes here that are right inside of our PowerPoint application. We will insert this uh, smiley face here and we'll go ahead and draw this guy over here if I want to. Now, PowerPoint has these kind of red lines that kind of show up. They kind of guide you along the way to kind of see, make sure that things are kind of lining up properly. So I'll just kind of move until I see the line here. And I'm good to go. So just like with our text box and with our picture, we also get the contextual menu for the shape format. And so if I want to go ahead and apply some, some layouts here, I can. Maybe I want this to be a little more bluish. Maybe I'll give it a color like that. It looks happier like that. I'll go ahead and apply that. And if I wanted to do a shape fill, I can change the fill color automatically if I want to. I can add a shape outline if I wanted to do that as well. And what I really like to play with is the shape effects. So if I click on shape effects here, I have some presets that I can use. So I can just kind of highlight or hover over each one. It's giving me a nice little preview of what it would look like. So then some of these have various shadows. Some of them, they, um, they are fixed in a certain way, diagonally, or giving you a different perspective as well. That looks pretty cool. We have some other shadow related ones here. Uh, we have reflections. Reflections are pretty cool. They tend to look very nice on slides as well. So we have some really long reflections, some short ones here. Maybe I'll give it, uh, give it, a, give it this reflection here. And uh, we also have different types of glows that we can use. So if you want to brighten it up here, we can do that. Okay. And we can also do that uh, with our picture. So if I go back to picture format, I can go ahead and apply some picture effects here as well. So again, I have the same presets for my eagles there. 
So the whole idea is you have a lot of options here to kind of customize any picture or any graphic that you insert, whether it's an icon, whether it's a picture, whether it's a shape, anything here. You have a lot of editing options here to go ahead and do that. Maybe I'll give this a glow. There we go. Very good. So go ahead, insert some shapes, insert some stock images or some icons. And go ahead, and once you click on it, pay attention to that contextual menu. It's asking you to click on it so that you can go ahead and apply some formatting to your graphics here as well. We'll go ahead and insert our text box as well. We'll draw it down here. Once again, we set it as the default. And so we have the option here, waiting for our tips. So write your tips and go ahead and play around with your graphics. Come right back. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you had some fun inserting some images and some shapes and editing it as well. Let's go ahead and talk about the eyedropper. Eyedropper is a really powerful tool in PowerPoint that allows you to add custom colors that are hard to find and be able to apply them to various elements and objects in PowerPoint. Notice I have prepared this slide for you. So I do have four smiley face icons that I went ahead and inserted here. I also have a picture over here on the right side. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on my smiley face here. And I'm going to go ahead and make use of that contextual menu for the shape format as we have been doing the last few slides. And what I want to do, I want to go ahead and, and drop a color in there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on shape fill. And maybe this happens to you from time to time. You're trying to look for a particular color, but it's just not there. Now notice that these are theme based colors. So depending on the, on the theme that you selected, you will have a, a specific set of color options here. We do have our standard colors here, you know, our standard colors here on the color wheel. But what if you're looking for a specific color and it's just not working for you? Well, this is where the eyedropper comes in. And I'll just go ahead and mouse over the eyedropper here. Pick a fill color by clicking within the app window. To pick a color outside of the app window, click and drag. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And the way that this works is it looks like a little, you know, a little baby, <laughs> baby eyedropper tool here. But if I move this, notice how that little square, it's, it's recognizing the color that I'm clicking on. And it's going to fill that up for me. So right now it's blue. But here's the situation. I inserted this picture here because it has some really nice colors in there that I want to use. And so now, because I was not able to find the colors I was looking for under the shape fill because of my theme, I can go ahead and copy any of the colors that I see here in this picture. So maybe I want to go ahead and grab this, this blue here. Okay. I'll go ahead and just click on it, left click, Notice how it applies it right here to my smiley face. I'll go ahead and do that again. Click on my second smiley face here. Head up to the shape format, contextual menu. Drop down for shape fill. Click on the eyedropper. And this time maybe I want, uh, maybe I want this color here. And notice if I just kind of leave my mouse still, it gives me the RGB value here for that particular color, which is really, really cool. So the RGB value here for this lavender is 238, 224, 254. I'm going to go ahead and left click. It applies that lavender for me. So we've been dealing with some, some colors that are, you know, inside of our slide here. What if I want to grab this orange, right, from our, our menu here? Well, it's slightly different. The only thing we have to do differently when we move off of the slide, we have to make sure that we left click and drag in order to get that color. So the whole idea behind the eyedropper, you can grab any color you want you, by either inserting a picture right here or going uh, to another slide, pointing on another color on another slide, even from your menu. So in this case, we'll grab one from our menu here. Go back to my shape format, shape fill, eyedropper. This time I'm going to left click and drag. So now I can grab 
this orange color here that I wanted. Very good. And now for our last one, we'll go ahead and grab this last smiley face here. And let's see, what color do I want this time? We'll go ahead and click on Shape Fill. Go back to the eyedropper. I notice the eyedropper is only available on certain menus. Okay, So in this case, we're doing a Shape Fill. So it's available here for us as well. Let's see, this time, maybe I want to grab this color from my Save button. See if I can do it up here. See if I can grab this color. There we go. All right, very good. So that's the eyedropper. Do as I did, go ahead and insert a pic picture that has some nice colors that you want. Use the eyedropper and just go ahead and copy them over to your smiley faces here. Go ahead and include your tip as well. Pause this video, have some practice, and come right back. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you had fun with the eyedropper. I certainly did. Now, let's talk about modifying objects. Objects are a really great way to really make your presentation stand out. You can insert various objects. Uh, in this example, I have a, a slide that's pre-created for us. And if you notice, I did insert three text boxes here. And I also have three icons that I'm using with permission here for Microsoft, uh, PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. And we do have our tips text box down here as well. So let's talk about editing objects, formatting, grouping, arranging, and then uh, animating here as well. So let's talk about editing. Uh, remember, we, we have worked with the text box so far. And remember, when we click on an object, we do get that contextual menu for our shape format or our picture format. So we're going to be interacting with these menus as we make some changes to these objects that are on this slide here. So what I want to do here, I want to kind of create a little staggered approach here, maybe like a stepped approach. So I'm going to go ahead and move things around here a little bit just for right now. just want to make some room. And let's see, maybe I want this to kind of be halfway through. I'll use my guiding red lines there to kind of give me a nice visual of where I am. And let's see, this one I want to move also here, but I want it to be the same distance between the two. So I think right there. Very good. So I have a nice stepped approach here as well. And now, so they're kind of, they're kind of aligned the way that I want them to be. But now what if I want to go ahead and move them? Instead of moving them one by one, what I can do is I can go ahead and group them and I'll group them just by clicking on one, holding down the control key, clicking on the other one, holding down the control key still, and clicking on the other one here. So now I can move them together in unison. So now if I just want to kind of move them over to the right, I can go ahead and group them in that way as well. So this is the temporary grouping. I can go ahead and let go. But now if I want to permanently um, kind of group these together, notice if I let go, now the grouping is broken. I can move them one by one. But if I want to go ahead and I can select all of them, okay, just by, once again, control clicking on them. And going up to my shape format here, right over here, all the way to my right in the Arrange section. We use this earlier to align our text box. Well, this time I'm gonna go ahead and group them together. So now I can permanently group them together. Notice I get a huge rectangular box around them that shows me that they're grouped. So if I try to move one of them individually, I can't. They're all moving all together here. So if you want to go ahead and break up the group, you can go ahead and ungroup it just by clicking on group and saying ungroup here. I want to ungroup them temporarily because I want to go ahead and, and uh, make some edits here. So on the bottom, I want to have uh, Microsoft Word. So I want this to, to kind of be, you know, have some of the, the blue colors in here as well. So I'll go ahead and grab a shape style. And what I want is, let's see, I just want the outline. I don't want the, the fill color. So let's see, maybe I'll grab this one here. 
So notice they're all still grouped. I'm going to go ahead and click away and select this one individually here. And maybe I just want that blue outline here. Very good. And the next one I want is going to be PowerPoint. So I'll grab that orange. This time I'll click on the more and grab that orange outline here. And then the third one will be Excel. So I'll grab that green outline by clicking here. And let's see, grabbing the, this is the closest to green that I have here, green accent six. Very good. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to kind of just move these individually to each section here. But I want these to all be the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and try to resize them together. So I'll hold down the control key and select all of them. Let's see what happens if I were to try to resize one of them. So notice they're all resizing together. But I already know that they're different sizes. So I'll go up to my picture format here. And let's see if I can kind of give all of them the same size here. So I'll try to apply the same height and the same width here as well. And let's see, I think that looks pretty good. All right. So now I can go ahead and drag this over, drag them over individually here, just like that. And if I want to be very, very particular about the spacing, what I can do is I can go to my view tab, which is right here, and I can go ahead and turn on my grid lines. Okay, so I can turn my grid lines on, which are right here. So that will give me more control, right? So I can see exactly where those lines are. Maybe those red lines are not working for you. So now I have my grid lines here. Now I can kind of try to line them up a little better here. That's pretty good for me right now. I'll leave it like that, right? And just like that, we have a pretty nice layout here. I'm gonna go ahead and type Excel in here. And then here, I'll go ahead and type PowerPoint. And for down here, we'll go ahead and put Word. Very good. All right. So now we went ahead and we we're able to make some edits, some formats. We talked about grouping them. And now what I can do, if I want to group all of these together, right? Maybe I just want to move it to the top a little bit instead of moving them individually. So I can go ahead and temporarily group them. And now I can just press my up arrow. Okay, so now I can move it up a little bit here. Maybe I can move it a little bit to the right. So this is where grouping comes in. Now I can I can go ahead and you know just kind of make this official by grouping all of them together. Right. But I don't want to do that, not right now, because what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and kind of provide some animations here. So what if I want to animate it so that Excel and its icon comes in at the same time? Well, I can go ahead and group them. So this time I'll go ahead and click on the shape format. I'll group them together. So now these are grouped. I'll perform the same grouping with PowerPoint and its corresponding uh, image here. Click on group. So now they're grouped. Do the same thing with Word. Click on group. So now I have three objects right? Instead of six. So now what I can do, now I'm ready to actually go ahead and animate them. So if I want to go ahead and apply a basic animation, I can go ahead and do so. So I'll go ahead and click on animation here. Notice I have my first group here, clicked on Excel. And I just want to, I want it to fly in. So now I have the opportunity to have them fly in together as opposed to separately here. Uh, I want the same kind of effect for PowerPoint and Word. And so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and click on PowerPoint. I'll click on Fly In here as well. Now for Word, 
people do the same thing. So very nice. You have the option there of grouping elements together so that you can animate them. Another, another benefit of grouping elements together, you can apply universal formatting to all of those objects there as well. And of course, we can always edit and make individual changes to these objects. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my grid lines here. So go ahead, pause the video, add some objects to your slide here, group them together, edit them, arrange them, and add some animation to them as well, and come right back. Welcome back. Let's talk about working with tables. Now, inserting tables into your presentation is a great way to be able to communicate data. So you don't really want to be speaking about data. You want to be able to kind of visualize it and give people a really nice infographic about your data. So there's several ways that we can actually insert a table. But notice right now I have inserted a new slide with, with my title and content. And I have my content placeholder down here that's just waiting for me to go, go ahead and insert a table by clicking on this table icon. Now, there are other ways that we can insert a table, specifically by going to our Insert tab. If we take a look over here in our Tables command group, we do have this drop down to be able to go ahead and insert a table. So what we'll do is we'll create two tables. We'll create one using our content placeholder on the bottom here. And then we'll go ahead and use the feature to use Excel to create our table for us. So let's go ahead and click on the table insert table icon here and it asks you, well, what, how many columns do you want your table to be and how many rows do you want it to be? Now we can adjust this later and just for practice purposes, we'll just accept the defaults here. So right now we have five columns and two rows. I'll just go ahead and click OK. So it draws my table here and notice that it's an, it's inheriting the, the table design based on the current theme. Remember, I'm using that iron boardroom theme, so it's inheriting some of these colors here. And that's why it's good to use a theme. It always gives you really nice colors that work together well here. So I can go ahead and, and just go ahead and start working on this table. So I figure what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and rate some of the Microsoft Office applications here. So I'll go ahead and type Excel. Well, first I'll put apps apps that I want to rate. And then maybe I'll put usage. So how often do I use them? And maybe I'll put my skill level here. So am I beginner, intermediate, or advanced? Now, over here, I can go ahead and just start writing my first app. I'll go ahead and enter Excel. And so notice, this is a fully functional table. So we have our columns that are going up and down. We have our rows that are going left to right here. So for Excel, I'll put every day. I use it every day. And uh, I'll put skill, I'll put advanced. For here as well. Okay, so now what we wanna do, we want to be able to go ahead and enter another row because we want to enter another application, we want to enter PowerPoint. So how do we do that? Can we press the enter key? Nope, we can't do that. It's just expanding our, our current cell. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So now remember, we're working with an object here. So we do get the contextual menu, right? We get our contextual menu for our table design. And we also have a layout contextual menu as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the layout here because we want to be able to add another row or two for our next two applications here. So what I can do, if I go up here, let's, let's kind of take a look at this menu and see what options we have under the layout here. So over here, we can view the grid lines if we want to. We can turn them off. We can interact here, which is for the rows and the columns, which is where we want to be. We want to be able to go ahead and insert a row below. Okay. And maybe we want to go ahead and delete those two columns to the right so we can interact with this menu here as well. Let's go ahead, take care of business first. We'll go ahead and insert a row below. 
We just need to be careful to make sure what row we're clicked on. So right now we want the row to be underneath this Excel. So we just make sure that we click anywhere inside of this row. And I'll insert a row below. And I know I need two because I want one for PowerPoint and for Word. So I'll put two. So now we have two rows that are ready for input. What about these two columns over here on the right? I don't really want them. Actually, maybe I'll just uh, I'll just keep one of them. So I'll delete this one to the right here. I'll go back up. And this time I'll click on my delete option here. I can delete a column, the specific column that I'm clicked in, the specific row that I'm clicked in, or I can delete the entire table. I just want to go ahead and delete that last column. So now I'm good to go, right? So now I'll go ahead and I'll type in PowerPoint here. And I'll go ahead and type in Word as well. PowerPoint, I use weekly, Word. I also use daily. And I'll put advanced for all of them here. Very good. So I have my nice little table here. And I want to go ahead and now inserting, we inserted a row below. It's the same concept for inserting a column. We can just insert to the right or we can insert a column to the left. But we don't really need a, another column here. Here, I'll just put my rating. Sorry, rating. And on a scale of one to five, I'm going to give these here five, five, and five. I love them all. So now, what else? What else can we do with this table? Well, we can go ahead and apply some more formattings as well. What if we want to kind of work on the alignment here, right? So we do have an alignment group, which is right up here. So just as if we were working in Excel, right now it's left align. We can uh, center it or we can right align it. We can establish the, uh, the, the size of the row, the width of the column, Okay, so they're all here for us that we can go ahead and use. So I'll go ahead, I'll just see if I can center everything here in my table. Notice it's just clicking, it's just um, center aligning this particular cell. So what I want to do, maybe if I click on select, maybe I can select the entire table. Now let's see if I can align everything. There we go. Everything is nice and centered. And I'm pretty much good to go now. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make some room here. Maybe I'll move my table over like so, because I want to place another table to the right. And just want to make sure everything is on one line there. And I can go ahead and resize individual columns like that if I want to. You can resize individual rows just by clicking in between, right in between the intersection there. And I'm just kind of want to move this around a little bit. We're just taking a look at the basic tools. There's some advanced tools that we can use for our table, but um, we're just taking a look at the basic tools right now. Okay, so we're able to insert our table just by using the content placeholder. So go ahead and insert your table using the content placeholder. We'll come back and then we'll go ahead and insert a table using the Excel command. Maybe I'll go ahead and align this by clicking on it. And let's see if I can align it and center this on my slide. Very good. I'll see you in a few. Okay, now let's talk about other ways to insert a table. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just remove my content placeholder here. I'll move my cursor to the border. Once it's selected, I'll press the delete key just to kind of move that out of the way there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go up to my insert tab and we'll take a look at some other ways that we can insert a table. So here I am on my insert tab. I'm going to go ahead and click on my tables drop down here. 
And we'll take a look at two, two other options for creating a table. So I can go ahead and click on the table. One of the easiest ways to insert a table is right here. You can go ahead and actually draw your table. So we can do a two by three table, a three by three. Okay. And so if I were to go ahead and create this table here, now I can just go ahead and move it around here. And one thing we did not talk about when we created our first table was just the table styles option that we have up here. So we do have several options to create some styles. And this is a great opportunity to really make your table stand out. So depending on the colors that you've selected, we can apply this here. And look, we're just mousing over and it's giving us a nice preview of what our table will look like here as well. So the easiest way is just to go ahead and draw the table. But uh, I don't want this table. We're going to go ahead and create an, an Excel table. So I want to delete this table. I'll click on my table here, go up to my layout contextual menu. And over here on my left, I'm going to go ahead and delete the entire table. I'll go back to my insert tab here. And this time, I'm going to click on the drop down. I want to use an Excel spreadsheet to create my table here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. It opens up. Well, two things happened here. It gave us our small Excel table here. And if you take a look at the top, we notice that we have this Excel. Right? We have our Excel ribbon tab up here at the top as well. So pretty cool. Now, this can be a little frustrating if you're not aware of how it works. So I'll do my best to kind of guide you to show you how it works here. The first thing we notice is that you get you get four cells here. So what you want to do is you just want to start typing in your headers. OK, so in this case, we have the app. I'm going to press the tab key to move over to the next cell. And then we have usage. I'll press tab again. And we have skill. And then finally, we have rating. I'm going to press the enter key so I can go to my next row here. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and build Excel. I'll press enter to go to the next row. Put in PowerPoint. And I'll go ahead and press enter for Word. Now I can use my arrow keys just to kind of go back up here. So at this point, what you want to do, one thing to be mindful of is that whatever you see inside of this box is what is going to be displayed for your table once you're finished. So you want to make sure that you kind of expand this so that you can see all of your columns. Okay, so I'll go back over here. So all my columns, my four columns are being showed there. I want to grab this handle on the bottom to make sure I can see everything here. I want to make sure that you don't overexpand. For example, if I expand it here, it's going to include column E, which has no data. So the whole idea is you want to make sure that everything that you see here is what will show up on your table once you're finished. Because as soon as I click away from this table, it's going to close my Excel ribbon. It's going to present me with the table that I created here. Now, why would you want to use Excel to do this? Well, you do get the options here, the Excel ribbon. So we can apply some cell styles if you want to. Okay. If we want to go ahead and format this at, actually as a table, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and start filling out my, my table here. And here I'll put daily. And because I'm using Excel, I can go ahead and drag these values down. Oh, grab my fill handle here and drag down. And same thing for, I'll go ahead and type advanced. And I'll drag these down as well. Go ahead and type my rating as five. So at this point, I can go ahead and you make use of the menu and apply some formatting right within the air from Excel. So if I wanted to go ahead and kind of center align everything, I can go ahead and make use of that menu. If I want to go ahead and apply maybe some cell styles to the headers, Go ahead and do so. 
And so it's really up to us. So now I'm going to go ahead and click away. And here is my table. I can just go ahead and resize it. And there we go. Everything is center aligned. Now, how do I edit this table? What if I want to go ahead and make a change? Well, I can just go ahead and double click on it. And it opens up this Excel window for me again here. And now I can go ahead and make additional formats to it if I want to, which is very nice because if I have some numbers in here, I can take, make use of the numbering formats here as well. So this does give you more flexibility in terms of how you can create your table and how you can format it. So that's why you would want to use the Excel feature to insert your table. I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a table and see what options I have here. Maybe I'll give this a nice bluish tone here. Click OK. And let's see. Maybe I'll remove the filters. Click away. And so there you go. So I can always go back in by double clicking and making the change. Notice that PowerPoint is recognizing this as a shape. Okay, so if you click on shape format, a lot of these features are grayed out because you imported this from Excel. So go ahead and resize this. I'm going to resize this here. And let's see, maybe I'll go ahead and try to center align this one as well. You can make it as big as you want to. So go ahead and insert another table. You can either draw your table or you can go ahead and insert it from Excel. Get some practice, add some data to it and come right back. Welcome back. Well, in our previous example, we expressed some of our data in the form of a table, which is a great way, but, but we decided we want to express our data in the form of a chart here. So we'll talk about working with charts. And notice I do have my similar layout here, my title and content. And this time what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make use of my content placeholder here and go ahead and click on this option to insert a chart. I'll go ahead and do that. Now, inserting a chart, you get uh, a lot of options here, and the process is actually more streamlined in terms of creating a chart. So the first thing we notice here is that we get our full menu for inserting a chart. So we can see all charts here, which is kind of what we're layered upon right now. And by default, we have this, you know, we have this uh, column chart that we can use, but we can go ahead and insert various charts, line charts, pie charts, bar charts. If we have any templates created, we can go ahead and insert a template. Any recent charts will show up here as well. I was playing around with a pie chart, so it's kind of here. I'm going to go ahead, just for the purposes of this demo, I'll go ahead and just accept the default value, which is this clustered column chart here. I'll go ahead and click on that and click OK. And you'll notice that an Excel window opens up for us here as well. And so now we can expand this window as much as we'd like. It's not going to affect the, the outcome of our chart here. So right now it's giving us a, a clustered column chart. Notice we have four categories on the left and we have an additional three series that are on the, the top as well. So if we take a look at our and our chart here on the bottom, we can kind of identify here are the different categories. And if we take a look at our legend, this gives us series, series one, two, and three. So each category will have three different types of series represented here as well. Now we can change these. You don't have to accept these defaults. Maybe you just want to represent one thing. So what you can do, if we wanted to, we can go ahead and just kind of delete these three here and that will shrink our chart. So that's perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and enter the same data that we entered before. And this time, what we want is we just want to go ahead and enter our applications here. So we'll enter Excel first. And then we'll go ahead and we'll grab Outlook this time. Go ahead and grab PowerPoint. 
and we'll grab Word. And in our series, series one, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put, uh, let's see, we'll put usage. And then we'll put skill. And then we'll also go ahead and include the rating again as well. And this time, you know, we, we surveyed some, some people and they're providing us with some information here. And so Excel, maybe it's used only uh, three days out of the week. So we'll type the number three here. Outlook is used every day for their email. Uh, let's see, PowerPoint, maybe we'll put three. Microsoft Word, we'll put two here as well. Varying skill levels from one to five. We'll probably accept these values here. These are pretty, we will make this a three. Okay, so for one to five, we have some ratings here as well. So we'll put four here, four, four, and then Word gets a five. And so, as you can see, as we're adding values to this Excel sheet here, it's dynamically updating our chart here on the bottom. So if I wanted to go ahead and kind of just remove this, this data here, right? I can go ahead and delete this value and it will actually shrink my chart for me. But this is pretty fine. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the X here and that should go ahead and um, close it out for me. So here's my chart. I can go ahead and give it a title and we'll just call it a survey. Okay, so our chart is ready. If we take a look at it here, we have four clusters, one for Excel, one for Outlook, one for PowerPoint, and one for Word. And if we're taking a look at the legend, we can see the values here as well. Now this chart is interactive. If we can just kind of mouse over it, it's giving us the values here as well. So I really want to think about what you're trying to communicate and how you're setting up your data. Okay. So now when we do click on the chart here, we do have some helpers over here on our right side, right? So from right here, we can go ahead and make some edits and some modifications to this chart. And specifically, we can go ahead and interact with the chart elements, such as the axes, the axis titles. And if we just kind of mouse over these, notice how it's just giving us a preview of what our chart would look like. So for example, here are the data labels. It shows the numerical values on top of the of each column. We can use a data table that kind of gives the provides the table information on the bottom and the chart on the top as well. We can turn the grid lines off or on. We can turn the legends off or on. You might want to keep the legends on, right? Especially if um, you're showing this for the first time. And then we have some, we have some chart styles here. So if you don't like this, you can go ahead and change the chart style. Now look at this one. This one is pretty cool. It's giving a, it's kind of giving it a more report feel. So we have a lot of styles to choose from, 14 styles to choose from. This one looks pretty cool. Nice colors here. I'll go ahead and select that one. You can also change the color scheme if you want to. So we have different palettes to choose from here as well. We have some colorful, some monochrome themes here that you can choose from as well. I'll go ahead and maybe I'll, I don't want to have too many colors here, but I do like this color scheme here. Go ahead and check that one. Uh, we do have options for some filters as well. If you want to go ahead, run some filters, you can do that based on different values. So you're getting the full functionality of an Excel chart here in PowerPoint, which is pretty, pretty cool. Again, you do get the contextual menu for our chart here. So we actually get two. So if you go up to our menu here, right now we're on chart design. You can go ahead and do the same thing as you can change the chart style. We have various formats that we can affix to it as well. So all the features are here for you to fully customize this chart. The last thing I want to point out is that if you want to go ahead, you can change the chart type. Maybe you want to use a pie chart. Now just remember when you if you if you do insert a pie chart, it's not really three-dimensional. 
So it allows you to kind of, so by, by default, it's giving us the usage here based on the values that we see here. So we can see that from our survey, most people are using Outlook on a daily basis here as well. And then if you want to go ahead and edit the data, you can go ahead and edit the data for this. And it's just as simple as going in here, expanding our Excel table here and making any changes as necessary by either adding rows or columns or removing them. You can do that as well. So just some basic chart features here. But the great thing is that it, it's Excel opens for you and allows you to really make some nice customizations to your chart here. Let's go ahead and insert a chart and try converting it to a pie chart as well. Have fun, make some, play around with the, the, the elements and the styles, and then come right back. Welcome back. Well, let's go ahead and talk about morphing. Well, what exactly is morphing? Well, notice I'm currently on my transitions tab here. And if I click on my transitions tab, I do have an option right here for morph. So let's click on it or mouse over it and see what Microsoft says. Move things on the previous slide to their new locations on the current slide. To get the best results, duplicate a slide. Step two, move things around. Step three, apply the morph transition. Anything you add or delete will fade in or fade out. So really what we're doing is with the morph transition, as we transition from one slide to the next, it's also applying a fade animation for us as well. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at how it works here. So I've prepared a blank slide here. I've included some of the elements that we've worked on today. Here's our chart. Here's our table that we created. Here's our image that we inserted earlier. And here is our shape that we inserted earlier here as well. Now I will say the morph transition is a great feature to use when you have a slide that has several elements that you want to be able to go ahead and showcase on the corresponding slides. So think of the morph transition as a wonderful opportunity to showcase different parts of a whole. So right now, what I want to do, I have four parts here and I want to use the morph transition to kind of go ahead and um, showcase these individually here. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and follow the instructions here for the morph. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the slide. I'll click on this slide here and I'll press control D as in David. That duplicates the slide for me. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and move things around. I'm just going to do some rearranging here. I want to, uh, well, I don't want that. Maybe I'll make this a little smaller. Just want some room up here so I can put things up here as well. And maybe I want things to kind of go left to right here. So I'm going to make these pretty small. And my table. And finally, right here as well. Well, maybe I want to move things down a little bit, kind of move it away from my top of my screen there. So let's try to move these and keep them aligned. So right now I'm move, moving things around. And so PowerPoint is going to realize, hey, you move things around. And so these things are going to slowly drift into their new location. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to that first slide here. And I'll hold down the control button. I'll, I'll select this slide as well. And under my transitions, I'm going to go ahead and click on Morph. Okay, and look at that. So I just morphed these two. I just, all, all I did, I just duplicated this slide, move things around. I'm going to go ahead and play this in reading view so we can see how things are morphing as we get to our next slide here. So run this in reading view. So this is our first slide. We know that we want to talk about our chart, our table, our shape, and our image there. If I click Next, that's well, how it's moving things around for us. Pretty, pretty cool. I'm going to press Escape to stop that. 
Now what I want to do is maybe I'll just add some, maybe I'll just add a few text boxes in here just to kind of make this a little more interesting. I'll add a text box here, one for each. And I'll just put a little caption for each of them. I'm going to duplicate these text boxes by clicking on the text box here, pressing Control D one, two, three times. So I can have a text box for each of these guys. I'll move this over. Not really worried too much about alignment right now, just for the sake of time. I'm gonna go ahead and just, and so I'll give each of these a caption, right? So maybe here I'll say, say it with a chart. And maybe here, say it with a table. And maybe here, I'll say better with shapes. And finally, over here, I'll put uh, enhance images. Okay, very good. So now let's go back and run this again. Let's see how this looks. Okay, very good. So now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. Okay, so this one has the, the wording on it. I'll press Control D, duplicate this slide. And this time what I'll do is I want to remove everything. I just want to showcase my, my chart here. So I'll kind of grab these other objects here. I'll delete them. I'll also apply the morphing transition to here. Let's see if it's already, it's already there. Okay, so let's take a look and run this again. Okay. Here's our second one, moves things around. And let's see here. Okay, so now we get to this next slide. So now we're only seeing our, our chart. Let's, uh, let's showcase the, our shape next here. Okay, let's go ahead and showcase that. I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and take it a step further. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and kind of have a slide just for each of these objects here. So if we want to do that, we're going to have to duplicate this slide now. We'll do this four times because we have four elements, I'm sorry, four objects. So we want to go ahead and duplicate this slide four times. So Control D, one, two, three, four. Okay. And so what we'll do is on our first slide, we only want to see our chart. So we're going to go ahead and remove these other elements here. Go ahead and remove all of these. And for our second slide, we want to show our shapes. So we'll remove everything and leave the shapes. And next, we want to showcase our table. Oh. So we're gonna remove everything else here. Just leave our table. And then finally, we just want to be able to showcase our image here. Now we could leave it like this, but what's really nice if we can come back together, remember we started with this slide and we broke it up into different pieces here. But what would be really cool is if we morph back into that original slide. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this slide as well, pressing Control D, and I'll move this to the end, right, all the way to the end. So just a quick recap, we're going to go ahead and start here. We're going to morph into this 
with our text boxes on the bottom. We'll showcase our, our chart, then we'll showcase our shape, our table, our image, and then we'll bring it all back together. Notice how the morph is already applied to all of these. So let's go ahead and run it. Let's go ahead and run it, see what it looks like. So it's morphing into our second slide there. Third slide, just our chart. Next slide, just our shapes. Table. Images. Everything morphs back together into this one here as well. Okay. Very good. Just a basic example of how to use the morph, but just remember, duplicate that first slide and move things around, and then just continue those steps for the corresponding slides, and you'll be good to go. So go ahead and practice with that. Go ahead and create a blank slide and add some objects on there. Duplicate that one and then move things around. Have some fun practicing with the morph transition and come right back. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you had fun using the morph feature there. I have included a slide here with some instructions in terms of accomplishing the morph feature that we just demonstrated here. So you can feel free to pause the video at this point, take a look at those instructions, and make sure that you can go ahead and apply the morph transition there as well. Well, it's time to wrap up. I'm gonna scroll down to my last slide here. I do have a slide prepared uh, for us that talks about reviewing. I'm going to go ahead and move this down to the end here. And so it's come to that time you're finished with your presentation. And so there's a few things that you want to kind of do to kind of wrap up here. And one of the first things you want to do is you want to go ahead and make use of that review tab on our ribbon to go ahead and perform some actions here. Uh, specifically, you want to make sure that you go ahead and check your grammar. And we're going to go ahead and check our accessibility as well. So on our review tab, we'll go ahead. We have our big spell checker here that's available for us. The shortcut key is F7. Go ahead and check our spelling. Yay, no, uh, no grammatical errors here. You can go ahead and click OK. Now I do want to talk about the accessibility checker here. And I'll quickly mouse over it so that we can get some gain some insights as, as to what it is. So it says, keep it inclusive. Let us make sure that your file follows accessibility best practices will help you fix issues quickly with easy to follow directions or recommendations. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And notice this is very, very uh, intuitive. It's really taking a really um, deep look at your presentation here, and it's going to provide you with some really, really good feedback as well. So notice we do have an actual accessibility contextual menu over here that allows us to do a lot of different things. But the main thing we want to focus on over here, we get this, this pane over here relating to accessibility. And as you can see, if we have any errors, it will let us know that we have errors. And if we have any warnings, it will tell us that we have warnings as well. So for example, right now it's telling me that I have, in 20, I have 29 instances where I have missing alternative text. I have a few slides that are missing the slide title. Those were my morphing slides that I, uh, I negated to, you know, to have a title on them as well. And then we have some warnings. So we have some hard to read text based on contrast. And then we have some reading order errors here as well. This is very, very intuitive. It's very, very exhaustive. I'm just going to highlight a few of these options here. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on this warning here for hard to read text contrast. And notice it will actually show you exactly where this is located. So if I click on this, it brings me to this table. And here on the bottom, it's kind of giving me more information. Okay. So why should I fix it? It's saying the text becomes difficult to read when its color is too similar to the color behind it. And it's also giving me steps to fix it as well. And this is just a really, really cool. I recommend everyone go ahead and run this accessibility tool before you present your PowerPoint here. 
So the steps increase the contrast by changing the color of the font or by changing the table style. So I can go ahead and click it, just change the table style here as well. And let's see another. So here, we're saying that we're missing some alternative text here, which I am. I did not provide alternate text for these objects here. And why fix alternative text for shapes can describe the shape for people who can't see the screen. And so for some people who, have, who are using screen readers or persons with uh, visual impairments, it's really necessary for us to go ahead and provide some alternative text here as well. Okay. So um, they're right over here, all the options for you. We can go ahead and we can provide alternate text. Okay, We can type it right in there as well. So at this point, after we run our accessibility checker, kind of just went through that list there, we go ahead and close this for now. Um, it will take me some time to kind of clean those up, so I will not do that right now. What we also want to do, we want to go ahead and save our presentation. So I'm going to head over to our file tab. We want to save and we want to print. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the save button. And because I already did save as earlier, it's just updating that for me. So now I'll go ahead and click on my file. And if I want to print this, I can take a look at the printing options just by clicking on print. And I have several options here. This is kind of the, you know, that the default printer menu that we receive here. So I can start by selecting my printer here. Maybe I'll just choose this print to PDF printer. And you can always take a look at your printer properties if you need to make any adjustments there. And I can make a decision here. I can either print all slides in the presentation. Yeah. Or if I click on this drop down, I can print a selection, only print uh, selected slides. I can select the current slide if I want to, or I can specify, I just want to print specific a specific range as well. So notice here on the bottom right now, I do have 19 slides. And so I can actually preview them here by just cycling to the left or to the right. So maybe these morphing slides, I don't really want to include them. So in that case, I'll go ahead and just kind of use a, a custom range to say, you know, I don't want, I don't want those particular slides here to be here as well. But in this case, I'll just go ahead and keep it regular, print all slides. Uh, you can choose color, you can choose grayscale, and it gives you a nice preview on the right of what it will look like. Let me go to one of my other slides here. We'll stay on that one. Or we can do black and white, and this is good because, as you can see, if you print this in black and white, a lot of the features will not show up here. So obviously color is your best option here as well. So then the other option that we have in here in terms of how we want to deliver our presentation. So we can present this. We can send this to someone via a file, or we'll see in another tutorial that how we can share this with other people. Or another option is to go ahead and export it. So what if someone does not have PowerPoint where they can actually read this presentation? Well, what you can do is export it as a PDF. It's as simple as clicking on export and once you get here, you have the option right here to go ahead and export it as a PDF. Now notice I am getting a warning here. We have, re we have recommendations that will make the PDF easier for people with disabilities to read. So you want to make sure that you go ahead and check that as well. But at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Create PDF. I'll get my dialog window here. And it's just a matter of saving it, giving it a name. Go ahead and saving it. I do have other options that are available in here as well. If I want to select certain pages, basically another type of print menu here as well. And once I go ahead and publish that, it's going to open up in a PDF and it will look pretty nice. The only thing is that you will not have the opportunity to run transitions and animations because they're kind of frozen to um, each of your slide there as well. Last order of business, I'll go ahead and I'll Maybe I'll add another transition here to the rest of my document. Maybe I'll have kind of everything fade in here. 
And then once I have that in from slide to slide, maybe I'll go ahead and apply that to all of my slides here as well. Okay. So we're all good. So go ahead and run the accessibility checker. Go ahead and make sure you run your spell check. Make sure you also save that file. Go ahead and export your presentation as a PDF and see how it looks for you. Go ahead and take care of those things and come right back. Well, that was fun taking a look at PowerPoint 2021 in our introductory tutorial here and just seeing what they have to offer. We spent some time just taking a look at the interface of the basic navigation. We we're able to go ahead and create a presentation and apply some themes there as well. We talked about inserting objects in terms of how to format them and edit them. We insert, inserted several shapes and images and took a look at the formatting tools there as well. We're also able to just talk about aligning or grouping objects together. We're able to go ahead and insert a table, insert a chart, and to really talk about animations and transitions there as well. Well, hopefully you were able to pause this video Hopefully you were able to practice some of the outcomes that we discussed. And I hope to see all of you in a future tutorial. Have a wonderful day. Hello and welcome to PowerPoint 2021. My name is Mo Jones, and I'm happy to guide you through this advanced tutorial for PowerPoint 2021. We'll cover some advanced features while exploring the refresh interface. I look forward to exploring what 2021 has to offer with you. Remember, this is an interactive tutorial. I will occasionally remind you to pause the video, practice what you've learned. Let's dive in. Welcome back. Let's get started here. Let's go ahead and customize our quick access toolbar so that we can go ahead and add our favorite commands to this quick access toolbar here as well. Notice in PowerPoint 2021, that the quick access toolbar has moved to below the ribbon. You can move it back to the top if you want to, but I like the idea of it being here because we have this really nice new visual interface that allows us to take advantage of all this space here to go ahead and add some commands. So right now, the only thing that's here is uh, the option to start our slideshow from the beginning. But let's go ahead and add some more features. We tend to add simple commands to our quick access toolbar, but let's go ahead and add some more powerful commands as well. I'm going to go ahead and just right click on any one of my ribbon tabs here. And I'll go to customize the ribbon. And once I'm here, what I want to do is take advantage of the ability to go ahead and customize my quick access toolbar. So I'll go ahead and qu click on Quick Access Toolbar here. So notice on the right, it's showing me all of my commands that I currently have in my Quick Access Toolbar. Right now, I only have this to be able to start the slideshow from the beginning here. On the left, I can choose from popular commands or I can choose all commands. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on here. I can add commands that are not in the ribbon, all commands or macros as well. I'll leave it in popular commands. And I want to go ahead and add some animations. So I'll grab my animations here. I'll grab my animation pane. I'll drop that in as well. I'll scroll down a little bit here. I want to grab that slide master so that we can really customize PowerPoint here. I'll go ahead and add that in. Go ahead and add my spell checker as well. And let's see what else I'd like to add here. Maybe my transitions. I'll drop that in here as well. And um, let's see, good old eyedropper. I'll drop that in there as well. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Just take a look at my list here. I have a few items. I think these are pretty good because I'd rather go to my quick access toolbar to access these instead of poking around the different ribbon tabs to try to find them. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And as you can see right here, I have the ability now to access any of these commands here. So if I want to go to the slide master, go ahead and click on my slide master. And here I am. This is the slide master where a lot of the magic happens here. So go ahead, right click on any of your 
file ribbon tabs, customize that ribbon, and add some commands to your quick access toolbar. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you were able to add some more complex commands there to your quick access toolbar. Let's go ahead and continue customizing our PowerPoint 2021 experience. I'm gonna place my mouse back up here on my ribbon. And I'm just gonna go ahead and right click on any one of these ribbon tabs. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up that customize the ribbon option again here. And this time what I want to do, I wanna go ahead and take advantage and take a look and see what, what options lives under these here. So we have general, we have proofing, we have save, we have language, accessibility, and advanced. We'll just take a quick peek to see what lives in here as well. We tend not to come in here to kind of see what's happening behind the scenes. So this is a really good opportunity for you to just kind of take a look to see what you want, want to turn off or turn on. If you're like me and you have multiple displays, you'll notice if you move your PowerPoint application from one window to the next, you might see things moving around a little bit here. Well, you might want to go ahead and toggle one of these options to either optimize for best appearance or optimize for compatibility as well. We can turn this feature off or on. So this, this is our mini toolbar. Whenever we select text, we always receive a small toolbar that allows us to perform some formatting. Keep in mind, we can also format the text by interacting with, with our home ribbon tab as well. So maybe you want to turn this off or you can keep it on. Live previews is a really nice feature. Whenever you select an element in PowerPoint and you want to apply a command to it, just by hovering over that command, sometimes it will allow you to see a preview of what your element would look like as well. So you can turn that on or off. You can go ahead and collapse the ribbon automatically when you resize your window. If you're not using the search bar, you can go ahead and collapse that as well to give you a little more space on your, on your screen here. You can go ahead and enter your username and your initials here if you want to. And yes, we can go ahead and we can change our background here. So we have several backgrounds that we can choose from. Right now I have clouds, a little cloudy. We have some office themes here that we can choose. I wanna go ahead and use this black theme, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Just keep in mind when you change your theme, notice it's an office theme. So this is going, going to change the theme for your Word, your PowerPoint, your Excel, and any other Microsoft applications that you're running as well. I'll go ahead and click OK. And here's my dark theme. Tends to be a little easier on the eyes, especially when working at night. Becoming very, very popular here. I'll go back into my general tab. I'm going to head over to my proofing area here. And under proofing, here's where you can go ahead and just kind of specify how you want your document to be corrected. We have some autocorrect op options here that you can go ahead and you can customize these if you want to. If you want things to kind of be auto formatted as you type, we have some built in lists that allows you to, allows PowerPoint to auto complete those for you here as well. So take a look at those options if you want to. Um, so PowerPoint is ignoring words in uppercase, ignoring words that contains numbers. So all of these are customizable. You can go ahead and enable or disable these as you like. Here on the very bottom, we have check spelling as you type. If you don't want those features, maybe you just want to, to kind of wait until the very end and run the spell checker. You can turn these off and perform that action at the end there as well. Let's go to our save here. So under save, we do, do know it's auto saving for us. But on the bottom, what I wanna point out is this option here to embed fonts in the file. This is very important. Maybe you imported some, some fonts from an, out, from an external source. If you send your file over to someone and they don't have those fonts installed, well, guess what? They cannot read those fonts. So what you want to do is, is enable this option to embed those fonts in the file so that when that person receives their presentation, even if they do not have those fonts, they can still read those fonts as well. You can come in here, you can go ahead and add a language. You can specify your language settings here as well. And as far as accessibility, um, we can keep the accessibility checker running while we work. 
the accessibility tool just checks to make sure that our presentation is all inclusive. And finally, under here, under advanced, we have some other options here, namely the use of the smart cut and paste, which will give you more options when you're cutting and pasting as well. So go ahead, change your theme, take a look at what's behind the scenes here, go ahead and turn some things on or off, and then come right back. Welcome back. Let's talk about customizing some design templates here for our PowerPoint 2021. I'm going to go ahead and use a, a very powerful tool that's called the Slide Master that will allow me to make some really universal changes to my entire presentation. I'm going to go ahead and click on my View tab here so that I can go ahead and interact with my Slide Master. So over here in my Master Views command group, I have this option here to go ahead and interact with our Slide Master. Well, what is the Slide Master? If I just hover over here, Gives me some nice information here. Master slides control the look of your entire presentation, including colors, fonts, backgrounds, effects, and just about everything else. Sounds good. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And notice over here on the left, we do have several. Right? We can keep track of the different types of layouts that we have access to in PowerPoint. But we want to go ahead and scroll to the top so that we can access our slide of the hour here, which is the master slide. If I just mouse over that, this is my office theme slide master. Okay. So the whole idea here is that I can go ahead and apply any kind of colors, fonts, and effects, and this will impact every single slide that's in my PowerPoint presentation here. And this is a good idea. If you already know what, what, uh, what your outline will be for your presentation, you want to make, make sure that you come here into the slide master and make some customizations so that you don't have to go and edit every single slide by adding a different color or a different font or a different style or a different effect. So for example, here, I'm going to go ahead and triple click and highlight my, my title here. I want to change the color. I want it to be orange and I'm going to go ahead and give it a bold type here. So, by changing this title here, look look what happened to all of my other slides. Here's my title slide. So now it gives me a preview of what my title slide will look like. If I want to go ahead and edit the subtitles, I can go ahead and do that as well. Maybe I want the subtitles to be a different color, maybe blue. So this is what all of my title slides will look like. If I go to another layout here, it says title and content. So notice here, it's inheriting the, the bold effect and the color that I applied in my master slide here. I can, ask, I can actually go ahead and interact with the bulleted list here. So maybe I want a specific type of bullets. I can just go ahead and highlight. I'm going to click on my Home tab. And I want to interact with my bulleted list here. Maybe I want to see squares. Maybe I want to see bullets. Maybe I want to see these little arrows here. Maybe I'll choose the arrow bullets. I'll check that as well. And so this was going to apply to all of my layouts here. So notice as we scroll down, we can see all of the layouts here for us as well. Here's our title only layout. Here is our blank layout here as well. Very good. So let's go ahead and close the slide master. I'm going to go back up to my, to my view tab here so I can go back or I can just go ahead and click on my slide master, which is here. Now I can go ahead and close the master view. And as we can see, it applied the change here as well. I'm going to go ahead and enter another slide here. I'll just press the enter key here. And so by default, it gives me this title and content slide here. But what I want to do is I want a different type of layout. So I'll go ahead and right click here and check the type of layouts that I have available. So I have my title and content section header. Well, you know what? I would like a 
a layout that has three content placeholders, right? So maybe I can have three content. So how can I do that? Well, we can go ahead and create our own custom layout by go going back to the slide master. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go back up to my slide master here. Since I did add it to my quick access toolbar, I can just go ahead and click on here again. So bring me to my slide master here. So I have an option here. What I can do is I can, I can actually just modify one of these existing layouts here. So this one, this is my two content layout. I'm going to right click. What I'll do is duplicate this and then I'll just add a third content placeholder. So I'll right click on this guy. I'm going to duplicate the layout and I want to go ahead and name this really quickly so I don't forget. So up here on my edit, edit master command group, I can go ahead and just rename it, which is what I want to do here as well. So I'll click on rename and I'll call this three content. Go ahead and rename that. What I want to do now is I want to make some room here and go ahead and move, move this over here like so. Now, if I want, I can just go ahead and, and copy this by pressing control D and this will go ahead and duplicate this actual placeholder for me. Now I can just go ahead and drag this over to the middle. Now it's just a matter of kind of making sure everything is aligned properly. There's no overlap. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and close out my slide master and take a look and see if I have that option there. See what it looks like. So now if I want to change the layout, there's my three content. Very good. So now I can go ahead and insert a picture on the left, some text in the middle, and maybe a chart on the right there as well. So go ahead, jump into the slide master, go ahead and at least uh, apply some some styling to your to your titles, change the bullets, and go ahead and modify that two content layout and create a three content layout as well and come right back. Welcome back. Hopefully you were able to interact with your slide master, make some customizations and recreate this beautiful three content layout here. Let's go back into our slide master because now we want to go ahead and further customize a layout here as well. So I'll go ahead and click on my view menu and I'm going to go back to my slide master here. So as before, what I want to do, I want to go ahead and locate that layout with two content, which is right here. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it. And again, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layout. And just as before, I'll make sure that I give it a name and rename this. So now what I want, if you take a look at our current layout, you know, we have two content placeholders that allows you to pretty much enter anything here from a table to a video. Well, I just want one that's going to allow me to insert text in the middle. So I want to keep these two, but in the middle, I just want to be able to enter text so I can kind of look like a web page as well. So I'll go ahead and rename this. I'll call this to two pics and text. Very good. So as before, I'll go ahead and make some room so I can go ahead and add that text here. Now, I don't want to go ahead and, and duplicate this again because I just want text. So what I'm going to do is I want to go ahead, back up into my master layout menu here, and I'm going to go ahead and insert a placeholder. So now I can choose what type of placeholder I want to add here. We know that we want text. I'll click on the drop down here. And so I want text. So now I just need to go ahead and draw it. So I'll draw it here. Try to make use of those lines that PowerPoint gives me, make sure everything is lining up properly. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll make this a little higher here until I see that line. There we go. So now it's all good. We have three content placeholders, one that allows us to enter anything. One in the middle is for text only. And the one on the right, we can also go ahead and enter anything. I'm going to go back to my slide master and close this out. 
And I'll go ahead and just take a quick, quick peek here to see if I can change this layout. And here's my two pics in it and text. Very nice. So that's ready for me as well. Let's go ahead and create one more. Maybe we want to maybe we want to uh, create a a blank slide that has a has an image on it with a background. So I'll go back to my slide master here. I'm gonna find that blank slide which is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And once again, we'll go ahead and give this one a name. So I'll rename this one blank background. So this will be a blank slide with a background. I'm going to go ahead and rename that. And then I'll head on over to my uh, to my top menu here under the background command group. I want to go ahead and give this a background style. So I can go ahead and click on the drop down. We have some kind of default background styles here that we can use. If I wanted to, I can click on format background and I get more options here. So if I wanted to go ahead and insert a picture, I can go ahead and insert a picture if I want to as well. I'm not going to insert a picture now. Maybe I'll just use the, I'll use a solid fill. I'll change the color. Just want something that stands out a little bit, not too much. Maybe I'll use this blue accent here. And from here, I can go ahead and set the transparency so that when I type, when I write my text on top of it, my text is not getting lost here. I don't want to apply it to all, just to my blank slide here. And I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's see if I can go ahead and insert that, that blank background. There it is. Very good. Go ahead and insert your own placeholder into that three content slide. And then go ahead and modify that blank slide and drop a background on it. And then come right back. Welcome back. Well, let's go ahead and talk about adding smart art to a presentation here. You might be thinking, well, what is smart art? What is that all about? Well, let's jump in. I'm going to go ahead and change my layout here for my blank slide. I want a two content layout. So I'll go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to go ahead and just give this a title here. I'll just call this smart art. And since we're talking about Microsoft here, Maybe the three things that I want to focus on for this demonstration are some Microsoft products. So I'll type Excel. I'll go ahead and type PowerPoint. And I'll go ahead and type Word here as well. So what is smart art? Well, our smart art lives right here in our home tab in our paragraph command group. And right here, we can go ahead if we want to we can go ahead and insert smart art. I'll go ahead and just hover over it, get some more information here, see what it's all about. So smart art is a way for you to communicate information visually rather than just with text. Converting text on your slide to a smart art graphic, such as a diagram, flowchart, can organize and present your information as relationships, cycles, processes, and more. So long story short, why go ahead and express something in words when I can go ahead and express it in the form of a really nice graphic here as well? And that's what smart art allows you to do. It really brings life to your presentation, makes your slide just kind of pop out. Okay. So now we have a lot of kind of a lot of empty space on this slide here. Let's make use of all the space. We're going to insert smart art. Before we insert the smart art, Notice right now that I'm currently click inside of the content placeholder. Because I'm clicked inside, notice that I have the dashed lines here on the outside of the border. So what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and move my mouse cursor right to the border there until I get this icon. I want to click. And notice now it's very subtle, but now I have this solid line all the way around. So now whatever is inside of this content placeholder is ready for smart art. I'm going to go ahead and Click on this drop down for smart art. And this is really cool. We're going to get a live preview of what each of these different smart art tools will look like. So here's the first one, the most popular one. This is a vertical bulleted list. And as you can see, it just popped. 
it transformed my Excel, PowerPoint, and Word, you know, my text there into a nice infographic there as well. Let's check out the next one. Okay, this one's a little smaller. This is a vertical block list. And this is the uh, vertical picture accent list. So we can actually add a picture to the left there for each of those if we want to. We have some other ones here. But let's go ahead and take a look at more smart art graphics. Let's see what lives under the hood here. So as we can see, we have lots of options to choose from. Microsoft has really considered how many different ways we want to go ahead and express ourselves in our presentation. So we can take a look at all here, or we can go ahead and drill down. If you know that you want a list, maybe a process, a cycle, hierarchy, we can go ahead and take a look at that as well. So right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll down so that we can see just how much we have here. Lots and lots of different shapes, different ways of expressing things here as well. So you're probably already thinking different types of smart art that you want to use here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on list. It's our most popular here. Now notice we don't get the, the live preview anymore once we're in this dialog box, but we do get the live preview over here on our right. Okay, so right over here, it kind of gives us a little preview of what it would look like here. So these are our list items here. Okay. They all have different effects. Some of them have pictures. So maybe you want to express something as a process. Maybe you're working on a project. You want to show something as a process. We have various, we have a, a steer, right? A step up process, to kind of show the steps of a process maybe. We have an arrow that kind of shows a continuous block process. You can also go ahead and express something as a cycle. So these are very, very useful for science presentations as well. We have an organization chart. If you want to go ahead and drop that in, you can make use of that here. You can express um, text in the form of relationships. And we have matrix that we can use. We have pyramid that we can use. This one is pretty cool. We can go ahead and use pictures or office.com. I want to actually use a picture here and I want to be able to add some pictures to my smart art. I think I'll go ahead and choose this one here. Nice old arrow and some pictures here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop some pictures in. Maybe I'll try and grab an Excel picture here. I'll go to some online pictures. Try to grab an Excel picture here. Go ahead and press Enter. Thankfully, this is the Creative Commons, so not too worried about copyright issues. I'm going to go ahead and insert that Excel. Hopefully, we'll accept it. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and grab PowerPoint from an online picture. So PowerPoint. And let's see here. We have several. Let's see how big this one is. Okay, we'll try this one. Very good. One more to go. Microsoft Word. And let's try this one. Okay, this one is very big. Maybe not that one. Let's see. Maybe I'll grab this one here. Very good. Excellent. So if I click away now, that looks pretty good. So now, we went from our little text from Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. We we're able to go ahead and convert it to smart art here. So we kind of did this by entering the text first and then converting it to smart art. But we can also do it the other way as well. We can also go ahead and just create smart art. So remember that we chose the two content layout. So we do have the option right here inside the placeholder to go ahead and insert a smart art graphic. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I just need to simply choose which one I want. I'll keep it simple with a vertical bullet uh, list here. Go ahead and click OK. And so now it gives you this box to our left here. And this is the box that you want to use to go ahead 
and create your smart art. You could type it directly in here if you wanted to, but I find it a lot easier to go ahead and manage your smart art here as well. So I'll go ahead and type Excel. And I'll go ahead and I'll type PowerPoint. And then notice if I have any indented bullets, it gives me another shape here. Okay, so it's going to make the shape indented and it's going to be smaller. So maybe I'll go ahead and say, you know, Excel is green. PowerPoint is orange. I'll go ahead and drop this down. And I'll just press the backspace key here so I can get another big icon here. I'll go for Word. Press Enter. This time I'll tab over so I can get a, another shape. And I'll just say this one is blue. Very good. So we're all done. So we just created two smart arts. One by converting text to smart art, and one by taking advantage of the smart art placeholder that's um, that's right inside of our content placeholder as well. So go ahead, go ahead and create your smart art practice. We'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about modifying the smart art. Welcome back. Hopefully you had fun adding some smart art there. Let's continue talking about smart art here. Uh, mostly, how do we modify our smart art? I'm going to go ahead and just click on my smart art here. And notice I can go ahead and click on individual parts of my smart art. So I can click on my Excel shape there, my PowerPoint shape there, or my Word shape here as well. But um, I want to go ahead and click on the entire smart art. So I want to go to one of these corners here. I'll click on this corner. So now notice my entire smart art is activated. And because we, we click on our smart art object here, we get this contextual menu up here at the top. And it's saying, hey, click on me. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we do have smart art design and we do have the format here as well. We'll go ahead and click on smart art design. And let's take a look at some of the options here that we can use to modify our smart art. We'll start by taking a look at our create graphic command group here over to the left. Notice our text pane is currently turned on, which we'll, we'll, we'll see here. So I like to use the text pane actually when I'm, when I'm modifying my smart art. If I, want, if I want to move things around or add things, maybe add a level or add a bullet. But if that's not your style, you still have the option up here to interact in the create graphic group as well. So what I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and click on my Excel here. Click on my Excel shape here. And I have an option. I can go ahead and move this down, or in this case, move it to the right. So I want to move it here, switch it with PowerPoint. I can do that. I can go ahead and switch it with Word if I want to. Or I can kind of move things around here as well. If I want to add another shape, maybe I want to add another shape here, maybe for Outlook. I can click on add shape. So notice I'm clicked on Excel. I can add a shape after or before. I'll go ahead and click and insert one after there. So now I can go ahead, I can type right in here, or I can go to my text pane and write the word Outlook. But let's see, I'll just type Outlook here. So that's how you would add. Now I would need to go ahead and grab a picture, but it's getting crowded in here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Notice just by deleting that line in my text pane, it removed my shape there as well. Very good. Now we can also go ahead, if we go to our right here, into our layouts, we can come up here and we can change the layout if we don't like the current one as well. So we can go ahead and get a nice preview of what it would look like if we were to interact with it as well. Notice we still have the entire options here available under more layouts. So you can go ahead and choose a layout that you want. A really cool feature is we can go ahead and change the colors. So we have different color palettes here. So we have some primary theme color palettes here that we can use. 
And notice we're getting a live preview as we just hover over each one. We have these colorful ones here as well that we can use. Various accents as well. So really cool modification options here. And then we also have different styles, right? So if you want to go ahead and we can add a different type of luster or shine or texture to it as well. So we have kind of this intense effect here. So now it's looking pretty, pretty cool. We have a polished effect here. So we can go ahead and customize that as well. But what I want to do, I want to go ahead and actually change these shapes here. I want the Excel shape to be green, PowerPoint orange, and Word will keep us blue. So I'll click on my Excel here. And notice we, we've been interacting with the Smart Art Design. I'm going to go ahead and click on Format here and see if I can actually change this color here as well. So I'll click on the Excel, not the picture, but the Excel here. And I'll go up to my shape styles and I'll just mouse over and look at that, it's changing it for me. So maybe I can grab a green one here. Maybe not that green. Let's see, different effects here. Maybe I'll grab this Excel green here. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for PowerPoint. Orange is right here. And Word is pretty cool. It's right there. So I'll go ahead and leave that as well. Very nice. Then over here, I'll keep it simple with this one. I'll go ahead and click on the edge here. And maybe I'll give this a nice effect. I'll go back to my Smart Art Design. And maybe I'll give that this polished effect here as well. I'll click away, take a look at it. I think it's looking pretty good. Maybe this arrow here, maybe I want to change the way that looks. So I'll go ahead and click on format again. And now I have to decide what color do I want that to be. Maybe I'll keep it simple like that. Give it a shape style. Very good. So looking good, looking good, pretty good here. I can resize my smart art if I want to, just by dragging from the corners here, kind of resizing things here. And you just really want to go ahead and just kind of resize it to the way that you want it here as well. So that's how you modify your smart art as well. You can either treat them as individual shapes, or we can take advantage of the fact that they're grouped together. We can go ahead and make a universal change there as well. So go ahead, it's your turn. Go ahead and modify your smart art. Go ahead and maybe change the layout, change the effects, modify the individual shapes, and get some practice there as well, and come right back. Welcome back. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about animating smart art here. So we can animate smart art. We can just go ahead and click on it here. And we can go ahead and head over to our animations tab. We can go ahead and just apply an animation. So maybe I'll have this one float in. Okay, so it floats in there. I'll go ahead and have this one. Let's see, I'll have this one just kind of maybe fly in. So if I were to do a preview here, one is floating in, one is flying in. But one of the really cool features about um, smart art is that it does such a good job of creating a nice graphic for you. Sometimes maybe you kind of want to break this up. You know, these are really nice looking visuals here. But notice that they're grouped. So if, if I wanted to kind of move things out here, I can't really break them up. They kind of move together. So what if we wanted to remove this PowerPoint here, right? Just kind of put it somewhere else on our on our slide, maybe on another slide in our presentation. Well, what if we just want to break up this band here so that we can, instead of having it all animate together, what if we want Excel to appear first, PowerPoint to appear second, and Word to appear third? Well, we're going to have to break it up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my, my handle here on the right. And remember that contextual menu that we had at the top here? I'm going to go up to the format here. Click on format. And over on the right here, in our Arrange command group, we have this grouping 
command over here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And notice they're currently grouped because group is kind of grayed out here. So I can go ahead and ungroup it so I can break up the connection so I can move them individually again. So now they're ungrouped, but that broke up the smart art, right? So now if I come here, I can go ahead and I can move it out again. So now I can move them out. However, now it's being looked at as either a shape or a picture. So there's still kind of grouping still going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on shape format. I'll go ahead and ungroup that as well. And now, as you can see, every single element is individually highlighted, which means that everything from the smart art that was grouped before is currently ungrouped. So now we can move things around if we want to. Go ahead and drag this out individually without affecting anything. I'll try to put that back here. But what do we want to do? I want to go ahead and, and uh, animate this here. So I want Excel to fly in first. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my Excel picture here and my Excel graphic. So I'll kind of group those and I'll go back to my animations tab here. I'm going to have this one fly in. So notice how it's flying in individually. I want PowerPoint to go next. So I'll group these two, fly in as well. And Word. I'll go ahead and, sorry about that, have these fly in as well. So if I run a preview, there you go. So now I broke up the band and I'm able to go ahead and apply any kind of animation that I want to apply to it as well. Just remember to go ahead and click on that contextual menu, go to the shape format and ungroup, break up that band so that you have more flexibility. Now you can do whatever you want to do with this content that you created here. So go ahead, play around with that and come right back. Welcome back. Okay, hopefully you had some fun there with some smart art. Let's go ahead and let's talk about equations and symbols. Two things not really used often in PowerPoint, but if you're a lover of math or maybe just symbols in general or teaching science, there are many reasons why you'd want to be able to interact with, some, with the symbols and the equations that are available here. So I'm going to go ahead and change my layout here. I'll just take a title only title only slide and I could have went up to new slide and just inserted in here as well but I just press enter and change the layout here so here I'll just give this one a title let's give it equations and symbols and let's see what options we have here so I want to go ahead and insert some math equations here into my presentation so I'm going to head over to my insert tab here. And all the way over to our right, we have this command group for symbols. So we can either insert an equation or we can insert a symbol. Notice to insert a symbol, you need to be interacting with some kind of text box as well. So we do have a blank palette here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the equation tool. Now, this is really, really cool. For all of all the math teachers out there, I'm sure that they would love this. I'm going to go ahead and click on the equation drop down. Now notice I can just go ahead and drop in some equations right here. So I can just drop in the area of a circle, right? Binomial theorem or Pythagorean theorem. But uh, I'm going to skip all of these complex <laughs> formulas here. I want to go ahead and write my own equation. So all the way on the bottom, we can go ahead and ink our own equation. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is pretty cool. I get this little box here. I can go ahead and write my own equation and it will appear in this preview pane right up here at the top. So I'll write a simple one here. Go ahead and type Y. Right, Our famous graphing function here. Y equals MX plus B. MX. Now I'm using my mouse to type here. Some of you have a touchscreen laptop and it's much easier for you to 
to write these, but it's okay. I'm making it work because up here in our preview, it doesn't, uh, <laughs> it's writing it properly. So this is improperly, but it's writing it out properly for us. It's recognizing what I'm trying to type here. And it's giving me the formula y equals mx plus b. Now I can go ahead and go ahead and erase parts of this of this formula here as well. So if I wanted to go ahead and erase the x, notice how it joins. Now it's y equals m plus b. We know there's not such a thing here. Okay. If I delete my plus sign, now y equals m multiplied by b. So pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that here. And this time I'll try to write another one here. I'll do maybe the maybe the area of a circle here. So I'll do um, pi r squared. So I'll say a, oh, I'm already messing up my a here, equals, and I'll try my best to write pi. Pi and then r squared. Okay, so it didn't come out correctly here, but no problem, my a came out fine, my pi came out fine, my squared came out fine. So what's really cool is I have this feature here where I can select and correct. Let's see if I can get this correct here. I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. And it gives you some options here. It's taking a look at what you wrote and it's giving you some suggestions here. And no, I don't want the Greek letter sigma. I don't want delta. I want this small r here, which is for radius. Okay. So just like that, I went ahead and fixed my formula. So a equals pi r squared. Very, very good. Excellent. So now I can go ahead and clear it. So we're able to write a formula, erase portions of it, select and correct. We're able to go ahead and clear it as well. I'll do one more, maybe the diameter a circle here, just two times the radius. Okay, and it doesn't like it here. We'll go ahead and fix this. Number two, there we go. D equals two times the radius. Very good. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that out. And let's take a look at some different ways that we can write some equations as well. So I'll go up, up to my insert tab here. And I'll click on my drop down for my equations again. And notice here, I can just go ahead and drop in an equation if I want to. So the area of a circle, like we did earlier, just go ahead and drop that in here. And I'll move this over here. Go ahead and click away from that. Maybe I want to insert another equation. Let's see what else I can add in here. Our old fashioned Pythagorean theorem. Go ahead and drop that in as well. Move that over here. So you can actually go ahead and just drop in some equations here if you don't feel like typing them. If they are available, you can go ahead and, and drop them in. You can, uh, you can modify them as well. So if you want to combine equations, you can actually do that. Another option is just to go ahead and just type an equation from scratch. So we'll give you a little text box here. Maybe I want to compare two fractions. Go ahead and under the structures, I get different structures here. So I have brackets, radicals, fractions. Also, I have some symbols over here that I can drop in that I otherwise would not have on my keyboard. Fahrenheit, Celsius, so forth and so on. But I'm going to go ahead and drop in my fraction here. I'll drop this in here and I'll say equals. I'll go ahead and drop another one. And now this is dynamic, I can interact with it. So I can say five over 10 is equal to X over 20. I can drag that over here. And so I can leave that for someone to solve. Maybe I'm tutoring or teaching, them, you know, we can go ahead and drop that in as well. So. That's how it works. Now, how do symbols work? I'm gonna go ahead and insert a text box here. And in this text box, I'm just gonna write symbols. 
And the cool thing is PowerPoint has lots and lots of symbols here that's available to us. I'll go back and click on my insert tab here and I'll open up my symbols and look at all these symbols that we have. Okay. So we can actually, we can actually drill down to different types of fonts. So we have the normal text, Latin text. Okay. So we have just tons and tons of symbols that are in here. We have subsets of each that we can take a look at a lot of Latin based here. And let's say I wanted to go ahead and drop in my, my copyright symbol. If I just click on this here on the bottom, it's showing me the type of symbol that this is here. So notice just by clicking on it, it's not going to insert it. I have to click on the insert here. So here's my little copyright icon. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Maybe there's something in here that I don't recognize. Maybe it just looks pretty cool. I want to go ahead and drop it in. Your recently used symbols will appear here under recently used symbols as well. So if you want to insert a great uh, less than or equal to or greater than plus or minus, we can go ahead and do that. Not equal infinity. Go ahead and drop this in as well. So I'll just drop these in one by one. This is the Greek small letter beta. We'll go ahead and drop that in. So you can always go ahead and drop in these symbols here. And there are lots and lots and lots of symbols here for us to use. Many different languages. I'm not, sh uh, not sure how many different languages are represented here. But we see some Hebrew scripts, some Arabic script here on the bottom as well. So they're all here for you if we need to insert them. Here's the Lamed, the Hebrew Lamed, where we get our L from. Very good. So go ahead and play around with the equations. Insert some equations, insert some symbols, have a little fun, have a little practice, and then come right back. Hello again. Let's go ahead and transition over to working with media. I'm gonna go up to my home tab here and we're gonna start working with audio. I'm going to go ahead and insert a new slide. This time I'll just do title and content. Go ahead and call this one audio. And notice down here in my content placeholder, I do have the option to insert different types of media, such as pictures or videos, but there's nothing here for audio. So what I'm going to do is go up to my insert tab here. And on my insert tab, if I click on that, I do have the option over here. We have our media command group. And right here, I can go ahead and drop in an audio file. I'll click on that drop down. And unlike video and, and uh, images, you only have two options here. You can either connect audio from your computer or you can go ahead and actually record the audio. There is no option to grab any audio from online as well. I did record audio earlier on my computer using PowerPoint. So I'll go ahead and grab that. I did save it to my music folder here. And here it is, Media One. I'll go ahead and grab that. And so you're presented with this little icon here. If you click away, all you see is this little speaker icon. If you click back on it, you get the, the play controls here as well. So I'll just go ahead and click on play. With PowerPoint on your PC, Mac, or mobile device, you can Create presentations from a scratch or a template. Add text, images, art, and videos. Select a professional design with PowerPoint Designer. Add transitions, animations, and cinematic motion. Save to OneDrive to get your presentations from your computer, tablet, or phone. Very good, just a little recording here. So what can we do with this audio here? Well, let's go ahead and click on it. And let's remember, because we're working with an object here, we can go ahead and we get this contextual menu here. So we have two. We have one for the audio format. We also have one for the playback. Let's go ahead and click on audio format first, see what options we can get there. So here we can go ahead and it's treating it as a picture. So it's referring to this icon here, this big speaker here. So if we want, we can go ahead and add some effects to it if we want to. I want to go ahead and change the way it's represented here. Maybe I'll give it this 
this glowy edge option here to make it stand out a little more. And so all of these options that you have available for, for picture corrections, we can make those adjustments to it as well. If I want to, I can go ahead and apply a style to it if I want to. Maybe to make it stand out a little more. Maybe this rounded diagonal corner white. That looks pretty cool. I'll leave that there. And you can go ahead and add a border if you want to. So it's really up to you. Whatever you want to do to make it stand out. Because originally, you know, it's just that it's very, very plain. So maybe you want it to, to stand out there as well. You can go ahead and resize it if we want to. You can make it as big or as small as you want to want to make it. But it's really up to you what you want to do here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the playback option now. And we can perform some, some basic audio editing here. And this is a good tool to use if you have some audio files on your computer that you want to edit. You don't have to go on the internet and search for any you know, rich tools here. You can perform some basic editing right in here. So we do have a few fields here, a few options that we can use to edit. So here is our editing option here. Notice we can also go ahead, we can trim the audio if we want to. I'll actually do that. I had some white space there in the front, but I just want to kind of blank out here as well. So I'll go ahead and trim the audio. And as you can see, we have our little, you know, a little uh, bar here that kind of represents where I'm speaking. So maybe I'll just cut out the first two seconds or so of it. And I'll play it from here and see if that works. With PowerPoint on your PC Mac, that looks good. So I'm starting this at two and a half seconds. Go ahead and click OK. If I wanted to go ahead and trim the end, I can do that as well. That looks pretty good. I'll kind of leave it like that for now. Now I do have some other options. I can fade in. I can fade it out if I want to. I can adjust the volume in terms of when this is being presented. Do I want it to be played on a high volume or medium? Just to be safe, I'll put it on medium here. And another important thing, if you're going to use audio in your presentation, you want to kind of set up your audio options here. In particular, right here, in addition to the volume, you want to kind of determine how is this audio going to be started? So by default, as you're clicking through your presentation, this will actually play on a click. But what if you want it to kind of just play automatically? You can set it to go ahead and play automatically as soon as a slide appears as well. Or you can be more specific and just say, hey, when I click on this file or this audio, go ahead and play it. We can go ahead and hide it during the, the show as well. We can just kind of have it rewind after it finishes playing, just in case one of our attendees wants us to play this, this file here again. So go ahead and record an audio. If you don't have one on your computer, if you do have one, go ahead and upload one by clicking on insert heading over to the media section and inserting that audio. Go ahead and apply some different effects to it by first clicking on audio format and then adjust your playback here as well. Then just make a determination on how you want that file to start and come right back. Well, that was fun recording some audio and inserting some audio there. Let's go ahead and add some video. Right, let's add some video here. Uh, this time I'm gonna go ahead and insert a blank slide that we created earlier in our slide master with the blank background. I'm going to go ahead and insert that here because I want to leave as much room, room as I can for my video here. So now I'll go back up to my insert tab as I did before. I'll head on over to my media group to the right here. This time I'll go ahead and click on the video drop down. So we have three options here. We can insert a video from our device, whether it's our Mac or a PC, right, or a phone. Or we can go ahead and we can insert a stock video. And this is one of the new features of Office 2021. Um, the stock media is increasing, so we, we do have access to more stock as well. Or we can go ahead and, and uh, insert a video from an online source. So we, this is where we can insert videos from YouTube or various other channels. 
We'll kind of do the first two here. I'll go ahead and grab one from my device. I do have one that I downloaded with permission here. I'll go ahead and grab the strawberry one here. And there you go. So it drops it in for me here. And notice it's kind of taking up the entire height of my slide here. So I can resize this if I want to. Just remember that when you're resizing your video, you want to use the handles kind of on the on the edges here. Because if I use these, it's going to smush my video together. You want to kind of keep that balance. So you want to use drag from the, the corner to keep the ratio intact here. So I'll go ahead and just quickly play this video. Just a small time lapse here. And we drop a strawberry in there. Very good. So now because this because this video is on my computer, I have some, you know, I can go ahead and perform some editing on it as well. I'm gonna head over after clicking on my video here. Notice my two contextual menus here that I have, one for video format which is on by default here. And I also have playback. So for my video format, notice now for our audio, it was treating our audio as a picture, but now we have our own video options here as well. So we can also go ahead and apply some corrections to this if we want to. So if we want to give this different shades, we can, as you can see, we can adjust the brightness level. And you can make this as bright or as dark as you want to. It all depends on what you're trying to communicate with your audience here. We can recolor this as well. Or if you wanted this to be recolored in yellow, you can go ahead and recolor that. And that is pretty cool. Some nice editing features here. I'm gonna give it a nice classy orange look here. We can go ahead and do that as well. I'll go ahead and give it, uh, maybe I'll give it this sepia look here. Very nice. So we can go ahead and we can also adjust, uh, what we can do is we can specify what image we want to represent this video. So if we were to kind of scroll through our video here, and let's say we want to capture a point where the strawberry drops in our glass. So maybe right there, go back a little bit here, right there. We can use this frame as the actual poster frame here. So we'll go ahead and change that. And so when we get to our slide, this is what it will look like. It shows the what happens in the end there. So you can capture any frame and use that as the initial frame for your video here as well. If I made too many changes to this, I can go ahead and just re reset it. I can always reset any design changes that I've made to it. I can reset the design and the size as well. I'm going to reset everything here, put it back. And I can go ahead and I can apply some video styles to it, put it in a frame, give it some glowy edges, some shadows. So pretty cool options here that I can use. Maybe I'll use this one here. That looks pretty nice. I'll go ahead and preview it. There we go. All right. If we want to go ahead and we can actually change the shape if we want to. So if we wanted to change this video into another shape, we could. So if we wanted to change it to a um, a flowchart, believe it or not, it will be represented as a flowchart as well. Very good. We have various effects here that we can use as well. So lots of different options. All depends on what you're trying to communicate with your audience here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the playback. Again, if you have any videos in your computer, you want to go ahead and edit them. You can come right here in PowerPoint, perform some basic editing. So just as before, we can go ahead and trim the video. If I want to, maybe I'll just trim that first part here. And notice as I'm moving the slider here, it's giving me a preview of my video. So maybe I'll just wait here the first second or so. Go ahead and click OK. But it's up to you. You can specify the start time, the end time. I can go ahead and fade it in or fade it out if I want to. 
Again, I can go ahead and adjust the volume. I'll put that on medium. And just as with our audio, we can go ahead and select the, how do you want this video to play? And click sequence automatically or when it's clicked on. It's really up to you. If you want to as well, you can go ahead and insert some captions for this video. Excellent. So we can go ahead and we'll go back on my insert menu here. I'm just gonna kind of click away from my video. And let's take a look at the other option here to insert a video. So we already inserted a video from this device. We can go ahead and grab a stock video. See what options we have here. It's still growing, right? Still growing here. Uh, maybe I'll take a look at, uh, I'll take a look at these here. So it's downloading my video here. And wow, this one wants to take up the entire content placeholder. So I have to go ahead and, and uh, trim this down. Maybe I'll go ahead and put this on a slide by itself. So let's see if I can copy this over here, or maybe cut this, place it over here on this slide, paste it here. There we go. And go ahead and play this. And let's take a look at the contextual menu, see what we have here. So here's our video format. We can still apply those color corrections to it as well. Let's take a look at the playback. So the cool thing with the stock image is you can still go ahead and trim it. And you can go ahead and apply those other settings to it as well. So as long as you insert a stock video or a video from your computer or device, you can go ahead and apply these edits to it. However, if you use the third option to go ahead and insert a video from another source, you will not have the option to go ahead and trim the video. You don't have the you don't have all of the editing options here as well. And so if I wanted to go ahead and insert another video here, online video, I'm presented with this dialog box here. And as you can see, I can go, I need to go ahead and copy and paste the address of that video from YouTube, SlideShare, Vimeo, Stream, or Flipgrid. I'm not going to do that now. I don't anything. I don't own anything in the cloud, so I'll leave this V right here. So go ahead and insert a video. Go ahead and play around with the different tools to edit it and come right back. Well, that was fun being able to insert video into our presentation. Go ahead and make some modifications to it and uh, be able to trim and edit it there as well. There is another feature over here in our media section on our insert tab. We already taken a look at the video and audio. We also have this option here for screen recording. Now, this is a really powerful tool that PowerPoint has included for us. So if you want to be able to provide instructions or a tutorial for your colleague, for your team, maybe even your family member or friend, you can go ahead and take advantage of the screen recording tool provided by PowerPoint. I'm gonna go ahead and click on here. And let's just take note of the options that we have here for recording. So I did use this earlier, and so I do have this portion of my screen that's toggled here. If I want to record my entire screen, I can just remove that option here. But maybe I just want to actually select an area here as well. We can record the pointer so that it's capturing our pointer on the screen as we're moving along. But I'm going to go ahead and select a particular area. I'll go ahead and draw this area out here. There we go. And let's see if I can go ahead and, and drop this in here. Try to squeeze this window in here. So we can go ahead and take a look at what Microsoft says is new in PowerPoint 2021. There we go. So I can just go ahead and hit the record button I can either turn the audio off if I don't want to, if I just want to provide a visual, or I can leave it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit record here. Here's my countdown. So what's new in PowerPoint 2021 for Windows? PowerPoint 2021 for Windows lets you create compelling content 
with the addition of features, including co-authoring. So we have co-authoring as an option. We have modern comments by being able to provide a mention. And in terms of collaboration, know who's in your presentation. You can see their credentials as they're working on the document at the same time here. Okay, so I just went ahead and, and stopped it there. And as soon as I'm finished, it just drops it right here into my, my blank slide for me. So now I can go ahead and, and resize this if I want to, like so, move it around. And I get my contextual menu up here as well. So I can go ahead and, and check it. I can recolor it if I want to. I can add various styles, adjustments, and effects as well. Playback options are also there. I can trim the video. I can provide a fade. I can set my volume again. And this is ready to go. Go ahead and play it. So what's new in PowerPoint 2021 for Windows? PowerPoint 2021 for Windows lets you create compelling content with the addition of features, including co-authoring. So we have co-authoring as an option. We have modern comments by being able to provide a mention. And in terms of collaboration, know who's in your presentation. You can see their credentials as they're working on the document at the same time here. And one of the reasons I like using the, uh, the select the area to record is that I can always get back to that menu to stop the video if I don't want to have to press the shortcut keys there as well. And again, if you want to, we can go ahead and insert captions uh, for, this, for this video as well. So there you have it, different ways to insert videos. You can create your own video. You can use an online video. You can use a video from stock many different options available for you there. So go ahead, take advantage of the screen recording tool. Go ahead and just create a small tutorial for yourself, maybe for a friend or even for a colleague. And then go ahead and apply any edits that you need to apply to it as well. And then come right back. Excellent. Hopefully you were able to go ahead and take advantage of the screen recording tool for PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and talk about outline here. Well, what is an outline? Well, we've kind of been building this presentation today as we're inserting slides. PowerPoint is actually keeping track of an actual outline for us. So up here on my view menu, click on view. And over here, I'm gonna go ahead and change my view to the outline view. Right now we're on a normal view. I'll go ahead and click on the outline view here. And over here on my left, as you can see, here are all of my slides that I've been working on. As you can see, some of my slides here, they don't have titles. So maybe I'll go ahead and fix that right now. So this one was the screen recorder. And I'll put screen recorder here. Or maybe screen recording. Then I'll just go ahead and, and uh, make sure that I move this down right here. So the, so the outline view gives you some options here. And as I click on each slide, I can go ahead and make some changes here. So this is uh, working with video. So I'll leave that there. Slide number six, this was another video as well. Maybe I'll call this video two. And I'll come in here. So you have access to the outline. You also have access to go ahead and move things around right here in the outline view on your actual on your actual slide. Now the way the outline works is if I wanted to to create another slide here, I can go ahead and give it a name. Sorry about that. Go ahead and give it a name here. And I can call this outline. And if I press enter and tab over Like so, now it allows me to write information right inside of the content placeholder. So pretty, pretty cool. 
But there's another way for us to just kind of go ahead and, and uh, use an outline here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. I'll close this view. And I'm going to go back to my normal view here. Go ahead and remove this content placeholder. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look, open up Microsoft Word here. So I already have an outline, you know, a small outline here that I want to go ahead and implement. So I can save this in a special way so that PowerPoint can take a look at it. And if I import this, it will actually create four slides with these names for me. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that these all have a heading. So heading one, I'm doing this the long way. So I'll go ahead and save that to my desktop here. Go ahead and close that. So now I'm on my last slide here, which was my screen recording. But now I'm going to go back to my home tab. And this time what I want to do, instead of inserting a slide, I want to go ahead and insert some slides from an outline here. So I'll go ahead and click on new slide. And on the bottom here, I have this option for slides from outline. Go ahead and click on that. I get this box here, right here on my desktop. We go ahead and click on outline. And let's see if it creates those slides for me here. It's doing its thing. If I scroll down. Okay, so here's my first slide, working with outlines, customizing animations, collaborating on a presentation, and customizing a slideshow. Very good. Now, keep in mind, it did not inherit the formatting from our slide master here. So we would need to, to come in and kind of fi fix that manually here. So I'll just kind of note a few things here about working with outlines. Okay. So best practice. Is to start with an outline. Will save you a lot of time. Next thing you want to do, go ahead and create an outline in Microsoft Word. Okay. And just make sure that after you create your outline in Word, that each line has a heading. That's how PowerPoint will recognize if it is an actual slide. So make sure you apply that, that heading there to each line as well. So very nice feature here. So once again, just go back up to your home tab, click on new slide, go ahead and use slides from out, outline and that will drop in those slides for you. So go ahead and pause the video and create your outline in Microsoft Word. And then go ahead and insert it. Make sure that all of your slides are showing up appropriately. If not, don't forget to convert each line to a heading format and come right back. Excellent. Let's go ahead and talk about animations. One of the favorite things people like to do in PowerPoint here is to go ahead and insert some animations. But let's go ahead and talk about customizing our animations here as well. I'm going to go ahead and remove this content placeholder. No longer need that. And I want to go ahead and insert a few objects here. So I'll go and click on my insert menu here. And I'll go ahead and make it simple. I'll go ahead and grab some shapes. Maybe I'll grab an icon or two here as well. So I'll go ahead and insert a shape. Go ahead and grab a smiley, Mr. Smiley face here. Go ahead and draw him out just like that. Then I'll go back up to my insert tab, try to grab some icons this time, see what's in the stock here. Maybe I'll grab some illustrations. And uh, well, this doggy looks pretty cool. Go ahead and insert that doggy there. Go ahead and resize, resize our little guy here. And maybe I'll grab one more, go back up to insert icons. Now I could have grabbed two at the same time, but if I do that, they come in kind of grouped and sometimes it give me a little issue trying to ungroup them. 
So I'll just do them one at a time. There we go. So we've got our dinosaur friend here. We've also got our doggy. The dog is looking at Mr. Smiley. And our dinosaur is looking at Mr. Dog here. <laughs> okay, so we have our we have our three characters here. So let's go ahead and talk about some animations here. I'm gonna go and click on my animations tab here. And I'll make sure I have one of these selected. I'll start with Mr. Smiley Face over here. And obviously up in here, we have a lot of different animations that we can use. If we kind of scroll down, we have different, different types, custom ones here. But I'll just go ahead and give Mr. Smiley Face here a, uh, a float in. So let's see if I can float in here. Okay, so Mr. Smiley Face is floating in. Gets the number one, that's our first animation here. But what I wanna do at this point is I want to go ahead and keep track, keep better track of my animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my animation pane. I did add my animation pane to my quick access toolbar as well. So, so I can click there or I can go to animations and click on the animation pane. I'll click here. So this opens up our animation pane here on the right. This will give us a really nice opportunity to manage all of our animations. All right, very good. So we, we've all used float in before, but what else can we do to Mr. Smiley Face here? What if we want um, Mr. Smiley Face to kind of float in and maybe we want it to, to float down, right? Because when we preview, it's floating up. So we can take advantage of the effect options right here. So based on what you chose, you can go ahead and modify it. I can change the direction. I want Mr. Smiley Face to float down. So there he goes. So we just customize our first animation there. And what if I wanted to add another animation to it? What about instead of, you know, in, in addition to floating down, what else can we do? So maybe I want to go ahead and add another animation there. So maybe after he floats down, I can have him swivel. Maybe I'll do that. So if I go ahead and press preview here, he floats, then he swivels. So notice it's treating it as two different animations here. So one and two. I'm gonna head over to my animation pane here. I'll expand this a little bit so I can kind of see what's going on. And the animation pane is really cool because now it shows you the, the length of time. So this took one second and the second animation takes two seconds here. I can reorder them if I want to, right? I kind of move things around. Or right here, I can change the duration if I want to, just by grabbing on the edge here, change that to two seconds. So if I go ahead and press play, it takes two seconds to come in two seconds to swivel as well. So it's really cool. We can apply multiple animations, but it depends. Not all animations will give you that option to apply a second animation or an effect option here as well. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead to my, my dog here, give Mr. Dog another type. Let's say I'll give this grow and turn feature here. So it pops in, it's animation number three. And so now notice with grow and turn, there's no options here. There are no effect options. So it's only ap applicable to certain animations here. Can I add another animation? Yes, I can. So after he turns in, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give you a, give a nice spin here. Just a lot of spinning going on. <laughs> And so we're getting this list built over here on for our animation pane. Smiley Face 99, Graphic 101. So it's applying names to all of these here as well. So we can go ahead and customize our animations. We don't have to just rely on one. We can add an effect. We can go ahead and add a second animation if that's available as well. So what if I want to apply the same animation for Mr. Smiley Face to my dinosaur over here? Well. I can go ahead and use my animation painter, which is right here. So if I were to just select Mr. Smiley Face first and click on the animation painter, it's going to do exactly what it says. 
Okay, I can apply that effect to other objects in my presentation. So I'll click on Mr. Smiley Face, click on Animation Painter, click on my dinosaur friend here. So he floats in, then he swivels. Very good. So now if I want to, I can go ahead and just kind of reorder some of these. I have drop downs here. If I want these to start on a click, I can go ahead and do that. I can affect the timing. I can affect the, the options here. And if I want to, I can go ahead and reorder my animations so that they come in in a different order here as well. Yeah, right now I'm just kind of making a mess of things, but it's okay. Let's see what it looks like now. So smiley face. Our doggy comes in. Dinosaur comes in. Very good. Let's go ahead and drop some, some shapes onto your customizing animations slide here. Play around with the custom animations. Make sure to turn on that animation pane, give you more control over your animations and come right back. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and talk about collaborating on a presentation here. Now, the whole idea here is that your document to OneDrive or in the cloud, and once it's in the cloud, you can go ahead and click on the share icon and you can either gather a, a link to share with your collaborators, or you can send a direct email as well. Now the link, sending a link is the more popular option because now you can send it over various medium. You can send it via, via Teams, or you can just go ahead and drop it in a, in a meeting chat here as well. So let's head on over to our file tab, click on our file tab here, and we're gonna head on over to where it says info here. Drop it on info. And we're going to spend some time in here, just kind of taking a look at some of the features that we can use as we take a look at this lesson here as well. So one of the things that we can do, we have a few options. We can go ahead and upload this directly to OneDrive if we want to. We can go ahead and share it, the document as well. If we click on share here, it's going to, you know, check to see if it's on OneDrive. If it's not, it will ask you to upload it to OneDrive. And then you can go ahead and take advantage of the sharing features here as well. So that's what you would need to do first. Step one, go ahead and upload this file to OneDrive. So if I click on here, it's just gonna ask me, please choose the desired location to upload the document. I can just go ahead and upload it there to my OneDrive folder. Um, just for the sake of time, I do have another presentation that's very similar here. I'll go ahead and pull that up. And for this particular uh, presentation, I already have the sharing features turned on. So if I were to go back to my file and info here, notice the options are right here as well. So back on my document here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my share icon right over here. And once again, if you have not saved this to OneDrive, it will just prompt you to go ahead and do so. So let's take a look at this dialog box here. So once again, different ways I can go ahead and send this. I can enter someone's email right here. And once I enter their email, I can specify what type of access they can have. So they can edit the document or they can only view the document here as well. I can send a message to them if I want to saying, hey, I shared a file with you. Or I can go ahead and I can get a shareable link that I want to use. So if I click on this, it gives me a shareable link. And if I want to further specify what people can do with this link, I can click on this arrow. And I have some options here. I can only, you know, only specific people. Or I can go ahead and choose allow editing here as well. I can set an expiration date for this if I want to. And I can go ahead and also set a password. So it really depends on the layers of security that you want to apply here as well. So once you have it saved to the cloud, click on share. And once the person receives the email or either opens the link and they enter into editing mode, what you will see, if you take a look at the top right of my screen here, I have, here's myself, I'm currently working on the document. And here's my guest 
that I shared the document with. My guest is currently working in the document as well. And one of the new features in 2021, PowerPoint 2021, you can see who's working in, in real time. So my guest is currently working on slide 10, which is this slide right here. And I know, so if I go to slide 10, I can see exactly where they are. I can see exactly what they're doing as well. If I had more than one collaborators here, then all their icons would show up here and I can see where they are and what they're doing as well. So once we enable sharing, once we first upload to OneDrive and enable sharing, opens up some other capabilities for us as well. We already talked about the simultaneous collaboration, but we also have some other tools. So if I click on my review tab here, so I do have an, some options over here for comments and also to be able to go ahead and compare. So I want to go ahead and see who's, told, who's chatting in this document. I'm gonna open up my comments pane here. And right now we don't really have any comments here, but if I wanted to, I can go ahead and drop a new one. Another cool feature of 2021, we can use mentions. So if I type the at symbol here, I'm not currently connected to my organization. This is kind of a private account. But if I were connected to my organization here, when I type the at symbol, my colleagues would still start popping up here as well. But I can just go ahead and okay, start the convo. And everyone will go ahead and see that. I'm looking at my other screen here where I'm logged in as a guest and I'm seeing the change. I'm seeing the comment here as well. And notice the outline here to indicate that we have a comment on this slide here as well. So we can go ahead and we can kind of cycle through our comments here, take a look at the previous comment, new comment. We can delete comments if we want to as well. And once we have a lot of collaborating going on, we have some options in here to kind of either accept or reject some changes that have been made as well. Another really cool feature, um, it turns on what's called uh, revision history. So we can view revision history here. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my file tab, go to info and down here, right here, I can see my version history. So if I click on this here, Over on the right side, it's showing my version history. And so this is helpful because if someone makes a change that kind of makes a mess of things, you can always go back to one of these versions to kind of try to find out where the mistake happened. And you can restore by clicking. I'm not gonna do it now, but I can click on this earlier version here and it will bring you back to all the, all the changes that um, occurred up until that timestamp, 2.21 p.m. there as well. So very nice tools to enable us to collaborate on a presentation. Another way to collaborate, obviously, is to go into your OneDrive. And from there, you have the option to share files, specify uh, different credentials for sharing, um, and for editing access as well. One more thing I'll show you here, I click on share. If I want to, I can go ahead and click on this small menu and I can go ahead and manage the access. So as you can see, I have a few people here that can edit and go ahead and change some of these if I want to by simply clicking on the small menu, changing their access to either view only or stop sharing the file with them as well. So go ahead, upload, upload your file to OneDrive. The easiest way to do it, just go ahead and click on the share icon here. It will upload the file for you, save it, and then provide you with an option to share your file. Play around, share it with your colleague, and then come right back. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you were able to play around with adding your file to your OneDrive and setting up some sharing options there as well. Let's talk about customizing a slideshow. Did you know that you can create presentations within your presentation? What if you do not want to present your entire PowerPoint file? Maybe you just want to use a few slides from your presentation. Maybe your idea is to kind of have one presentation for a large group. 
and then several parts of your presentation for smaller groups. Well, you can customize a slideshow. What we're going to do is head on over to the slideshow tab here. And notice over here, we do have a command group for start slideshow. And right here, we can go ahead and click on this drop down. We can go ahead and create a custom slideshow. Well, that's what we want to do here. And specifically, what we want to do, we just want to kind of showcase the media section here of our presentation. So slides four, five, six, and seven, they have media, audio, and videos. So we're just going to go ahead and set up a, a custom slideshow just to showcase those four slides there as well. So I'll go ahead and click on custom slideshow and show only the slides you choose. This is a great way to shorten your presentation or tailor it for different audiences. So if I click on my drop down here, I can go to custom shows. I don't have any, so I need to go ahead and create one. And I'll go ahead and click on new. And right here on the left, it shows me all of my slides. But the first thing I want to do is go ahead and give this a name. So maybe I'll call this the media show. And now it's just a matter of dropping in the audio, video, video two, and screen recording. I can do them one by one, or I can just drag them over there. And now if I want to kind of move these around, I can also move these around too, just by clicking up, or I can remove it, or I can move them down here as well. I'll leave it like this. We'll go ahead and click OK. And I'm good to go. So now I can go ahead and make an edit to it. If I want to go in and add some other slides to it. I can remove it if I want to. I can go ahead and create another slideshow or I can run it right from here. I'm gonna go ahead and show it. And there's my audio. So if I were to click on this guy, it would play. There's my video. I'll go ahead and run this one here. There we go. And then I'll go ahead and here's my other video here. And here's my screen recording. And that is the end of my slideshow. Very good. So we can always, you can go ahead and create some custom shows and tail, tailor them to fit different audiences. Go ahead and create a custom show just for these four media slides here. Get some fun practice, come right back. Let's talk about setting up and annotating a slideshow. Well, one of the cool things that you can do is you can customize the default behavior for your slideshow. For example, if you want to run your presentation to kind of loop in kiosk mode, you can go ahead and set that up as well. And don't forget, when you're running your presentation, you have some annotation tools to help to highlight certain areas of your presentation as well. We're still on our slideshow ribbon tab here. And we're just going to head on over, move over just a little bit here. And we'll talk about just setting up our slideshow. And we'll briefly take a look there to see what we can customize here. So notice, in this window for setup show, I have a few boxes here. I have five boxes to be exact. The first one is my show type. And notice by default, it's set up to be presented by a speaker in full screen. But there's other options as well. What if I wanted to be browsed by an individual at a, you know, just in a window? What if I want this to run in my office, in our office setting on a big TV, just to kind of loop? Notice as I click on browse at a kiosk in full screen, it's going to loop it continuously. And so these are not, these you kind of have to turn on if you want to. If you have any, any kind of narration happening, you can go ahead and enable that as well. You can show it without animations and we can go ahead and disable hardware graphics acceleration. Uh, not, not really necessary. Processes are pretty powerful now. But if you have something that's very, very heavy and you have a really nice graphics card in your computer, by all means, you can uh, just make sure that you take advantage of that as well. 
So in terms of showing the slides, we can show all slides, or we can specify what slides we want to go ahead and show. If you want to use a custom show as we did before, we created our media show, so we can have that run as well. Now, in terms of moving forward in the slides, right? because we selected the kiosk mode, it's going automatically, so it's going to move. So if we have timings that's, that are configured in here, this will work wonderfully. It will just kind of keep on moving by itself there, and it will loop as well. So another option, if you're like me, you have two monitors, and you want to kind of specify where you want your presentation to display, you have the option here. You can have your computer select the monitor for you. You can select the primary monitor, or you can choose another monitor. Maybe you have three. Okay. I want to go ahead and put these back to normal here. And I'm actually going to hit cancel because I don't want to interact with any of these. But these are the options here that you have. And finally, when you're annotating, you do have options here for the pen color and the laser pointer color as well. I'm going to hit cancel. And then we're going to go ahead and run that, uh, that custom slideshow. And we'll take advantage of the annotating tools in here as well. So let's go for it. So down here on the very bottom, we have our buttons to kind of go back and forth. But then right here, we have this pen. If we click on that menu, we have some options here. So we can use a laser pointer to kind of highlight things here. There's only two things on this slide, so not much to highlight here. But you do have a built-in laser pointer, so no need for those battery-operated clickers. We have a pen here as well. Notice you can change the colors by default. Remember, it was red in the setup. If you wanted to change that to another color, you can establish that here. I'll leave it on red. Let's see. Click on my pen. Maybe I want to draw a circle here on my audio. I want to draw an arrow. Not the best arrow there, but you do have options to go ahead and annotate, which will really liven up your presentation. I have a highlighter. Let's point to I can go ahead and highlight something here if I want. Now, this is really meant for, you know, a, a really interactive and engaging slide. Maybe you really have something that you want to ask questions on. And as you're getting responses from your audience, you can go ahead and use these tools to kind of mark up different parts of your slide here. And then we have our eraser. Just want to go ahead and erase these markups that we made. We can use that as well. And uh, the only other thing here that we can use is we can just go ahead and change the colors here as well. And if we want to go ahead, we just move over two to the right. We have our small magnifier here. So we can use this to kind of highlight a section here. And if we click on that, it's going to zoom in to that area. We get our little hand here that we can use to interact. We want to right click to get rid of that, that zoom. And then finally over here to the right, we have a small menu. We have some other options here that we can use as well. I'm going to go ahead and end this show. And it brings us right back to where we left off here. So go ahead, open up the setup slideshow, configure some options there, play around with them, and go ahead and run a show and make use practice with the annotating tools, and then come right back. Welcome back. Let's talk about navigation. One of my favorite things to do in PowerPoint is to go ahead and create a table of contents. Right? In Microsoft Word, we can create a table of contents. But in PowerPoint, we kind of have to build it ourselves. And it's really referred to as navigation. So here's the idea. I went ahead and inserted a slide here, slide number two. And I basically wrote down all of the learning objectives here on the corresponding slides. So for example, slide three is smart art. And then we have equations and symbols, audio and video. So I just kind of created a small little little table of contents or navigation here. The whole idea is that when I'm presenting this, I can always click and it will take me to, to that particular slide. And the way that I do that is I want to make sure that I'm on my insert menu, which I currently am. And if we take a look at the insert menu, 
right over here under links, we have an option here to establish a link. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my smart art here. And notice I have, I've created some links down here already, but we'll finish creating these four here. And then we'll take a look and see how this works. So I'll go ahead and create a link. And by default, it wants to go to an external web page or file. So what you want to make sure that you do is go ahead and just link to a place that's in this document. So I'll go ahead and click on that here. And what's really nice is we can move this box over here. And now we can look for that smart art. We know that it's slide two. And if we click on it, we get a nice preview here on the right. So we know we're in the right place. Go ahead and click OK. Go ahead and repeat the process for equations and symbols. Grab my link. Now that I've added a link inside of the document to a place in this document, it kind of remembers for me and it locks onto that for me. So now I just need to simply click on the slide I want to go to. Click OK. Two down, two to go. Link. It's number one audio. My preview on the right is correct. Good to go. And finally, video. There we go. Click OK. Now we do have two videos, but um, just going to the video section is pretty fine as well. All right, pretty cool. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll run this in reading mode. And I'll click on my video here. And there you go, it brings me to my video. But now, how do I get back? All right, I can always right click and go to a particular slide from here, but that's not really, you know, it doesn't really look nice in the middle of a presentation, you don't want to do that. So how do we do this here? Well, there's a couple of things that we can do. And one thing that we can do is we can create a button down here on the bottom. We can use our slide master, insert a home button at the bottom of our slide, and that will always bring us back to this particular navigation. So now we can go back and forth whenever we want to. So I'm going to go back to my slide master, click on view. Now open up my slide master here. And I'm going to locate that very first one, okay, very first one here. And I'm going to go ahead and insert, insert a shape. Now, there's a lot of shapes here, but all the way on the bottom, we actually have action buttons. So these are buttons that we can program. And if we just kind of mouse over them, right? So this one allows you to go back, forward. I'm going to go ahead and click on my home one here. And I'm going to try to draw it in the middle here. I don't want it to be too, you know, taking over the slide too much here. And once I draw it, it asks me a few questions here. Well, do I want to um, basically enable this icon by mousing over or clicking on it? By default, it's mouse click. And here, it wants to hyperlink to our very first slide, which is our title slide. But that's not what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and change this from the first slide. And I want it to go to a particular slide. So I'll click on slide here. And I want, to go, I want it to go to that navigation slide that I just created here. Click OK. Click OK. If I want to change the, the color here, I can do that. Maybe I'll give it the nice... Let's see, I want it to be too overbearing here, just a simple, maybe that looks good. I'll use that one. If I wanted to, I can go ahead and insert, you know, other, other buttons to go left and right. But just to keep it simple, I'll leave my home button here. I'm going to go ahead and close out my slide master by clicking on slide master, close the master view, and just do a quick check to make sure that my home button is on all of my slides. There they are. And I may need to move them down or move it move it over a little bit here. Some of these are kind of covering it up. And it appears fine in some other ones here as well. So let's go ahead and do a quick test. Let's go ahead and run. I'll do it in reading mode this time again so that it does not uh, interact with both of my screens here. So I'll go ahead and go to video again. So now I'm on video, but 
how am I going to get back? I'm going to have to fix that actually. Okay, so I went back to my slide master here so that I can kind of move this icon here so that things are not getting in the way. So I think what I'll do is maybe I'll move it kind of up here to the top right. And let's give that a try. Go ahead and close my master view here. And this time I'll check each slide just to make sure nothing is covering it up. And that looks pretty good. Okay, let's go back to our run our slideshow here. This time we'll go to, let's run it in reading mode. Okay, let's go to outlines. Okay, very good. Now I can go to my next slide here, but what if I wanna go back to my navigation here? Maybe someone asked the question. Click on my home tab, brings me right back to my navigation. So now I can go and talk about custom shows. And I can go ahead and go back home as well. So that was a pretty good example, but there's another way that's just really, really cool that allows us to drop this, this navigation pane into any part of our presentation. Now, if you have a long presentation and you have different sections, notice we can insert a section by clicking in between two slides and just inserting a section. So if you're operating with, with sections, you can, it will be a good idea at the beginning of each section to kind of give access to this navigation slide. But look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pretend that, um, you know, my audio, I have another section here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this slide right onto this slide here and let go. And what I just did, I just created a direct link to this slide. So let's run this in reading mode. And if I click on this here, it's going to bring me right back to this navigation slide. How cool is that? Okay. So I can go back or I can go ahead and end my slideshow here. So pretty cool. So that is the zoom feature. And notice now that I'm clicked on the zoom that I created, I get this contextual menu for zoom. So that tells me there are further customizations that I can go ahead and make. The first thing I notice, I can go ahead and change the image. Maybe instead of showing my slide like that, I want to show an image. So let's see what image we can drop in here. Maybe I'll drop one from an icon. See what kind of icon I can grab here. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll, hmm. Maybe I'll just grab this one here. It looks like a little letter. And so now, if I were to click on that, it's going to bring me right back here as well. Pretty cool. That is the zoom feature. Let's see what else we can do. So we change the image. We can go ahead and apply a style to that if we want to. Many different options here as well. And we can go ahead and interact with the, the border. We can have some different effects here just as we would with any other shape or object. I think I'll just put it inside of a circle here. Pretty good. So that is our Zoom feature. That is how we add a Home button to go back. Go ahead, go into your Slide Master, add a Home button, go ahead and create Zooms for the different parts of your presentation here and come right back. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and spend some time talking about recording a presentation. After you're finished with your presentation, you have some decisions to make. What do I want to do? Are you going to present it in person by displaying your presentation on a large screen and clicking through your slides? Or do you want to simply send the presentation to someone so that they can go ahead and watch it? Or maybe you want to, to just go ahead and deliver it in the form of a webinar or a seminar? Well, we have several options here. What we can do is we can head over to our slideshow. We spent quite a, a bunch of time here as well. One of the things that we can do is rehearse the timings, okay? And we'll just take a look at what the rehearse timing says. Practice makes perfect. 
start the full screen slideshow to figure out the perfect timing for each slide. As you rehearse your presentation, PowerPoint will record how much time you spend on each slide. Once you get the timings right, you can use them to run the show automatically. So that's one option. You can go ahead and just kind of rehearse the timings there. And so if you're presenting, you don't have to worry about clicking on the next slide. It will automatically move to the next slide for you based on how you practiced and accepted it. Another option is to go ahead and record your slideshow. So in this case, what you're actually doing is you're recording your, either a portion of your presentation or your entire presentation, but this allows you to speak. So you have narration that's, that's uh, possible. And if you wanted to as well, you can go ahead and show your video, show yourself presenting it as well. So let's talk about rehearse timings. I'm going to go back up to my first slide here and I'll just kind of do the first three slides here to kind of show you how the rehearse timings work. So I'll go ahead and click on rehearse timings and it's going to start right away. So I need to be ready to make sure that I'm speaking. So as you can see right now, it's not recording my voice, but I just kind of want to practice here. Welcome to PowerPoint 2021 Advanced. Notice my timer here is running. When I want to go to the next slide, just click next. And I'll just kind of read this verbatim here. Navigation, smart art, equations and symbols, audio, video, screen recorder, outlines, custom animations, collaborating, custom shows, setup and annotation. And so notice my, my clock is running here. I'm just going to go ahead and click next. Let's talk about smart art. We can animate smart art as an entire group when, or we can ungroup them so that they can appear one by one. So notice right here, I'm up to 54 seconds. I'll let it go to about a minute here. I'll click on pause. There we go. And so it says the recording is paused. I can go ahead and resume it. But just make note, the whole idea here is practice going through each of your slide if you don't want to sit there and click on it. Okay? And after you've explained everything, then you can just go ahead and click on the next slide here. I'm going to go ahead and resume my recording and stop it. And it says the total time for your slideshow was one minute and three seconds. Do you want to save the new slide timings? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And uh, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and run the slideshow just from that, that first part here. And remember, we can always kind of check up the, uh, right? We can always check on the, the slideshow setup here. So to use timings of present, so that that's currently turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and just present this here. I'll do it in reading view. And let's see how this works here. There we go. Spent a lot of time there on the first slide, but it's okay. So now it's just kind of going automatically here. So now if I were presenting this, I can, I can explain or I can speak and um, just having practiced the timing. Very good, so there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and end the show at this point here. So that's one way that you can do it. Um, the other way, obviously, we just rehearsed the first three slides, but if I wanted to, I can do it for the entire presentation here as well. So pause the video and then go ahead and just work on your timings. Pick a few slides. If you want to do the entire show, you can go ahead and do that as well. So now let's talk about uh, recording. Uh, we've been taking a look at the insert tab here. One of the one of the tabs that we have not visited is this record tab right over here. And let's go ahead and click on the record tab. 
And we do have a few options here. We've already performed a few of these tasks, right? such as the screen recorder, inserting video and audio. But we do have some other options here. We want to go ahead and talk about recording here. Yeah. And we also have the option here to go ahead and export our presentation. Once it's all done, we, we have the recording. We have everything set up kind of the way that we want it to. We can go ahead and export it as a video. But let's go ahead and talk about recording. Now, before you record, you want to make sure that you kind of clear any of the timings here as well. Okay. So I'll go ahead and say clear my timing on all slides just to avoid any conflict there. And I'm going to go ahead and click on record. Okay. Record narrations, ink, laser pointer, gestures, and slide and animation timings for playback. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my record here. And I'm going to go ahead and move my other window over here. I'm using two screens, so it likes to open in my other window here. So this is what the interface looks like. Uh, you do have the opportunity to go ahead and record, start your, your recording. You can stop it. You can replay it. If you want to show your notes, you can go ahead and click on notes here and it will show the notes that you have for each slide there as well. Uh, if you want to go ahead and clear, you can clear recordings here as well. We have some other settings here. Okay, so if you want to enable your microphone or your camera, you can go ahead and enable those as well. Notice on the bottom, my microphone is enabled. My video is, my camera is currently uh, turned off here as well. If my camera was on, I would see a nice preview right here. It will show uh, your picture in the, in the bottom right hand corner of the presentation here as well. So notice as I'm, as I'm recording, I do have my annotating tools here. So I have my laser pointer, my pen, and my highlighter. Keep in mind, if you, any of these that you use during the recording, they will show up in the actual slideshow as well. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and record maybe the first three slides again, as I did before. And this time I'll go ahead and, and uh, make sure that I'm speaking on this. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my audio here. So we get our countdown, three, two, one. Welcome to PowerPoint 2021 Advanced. We'll start by building our navigation list, which consists of smart art, equations and symbols, audio, video, our screen recorder, outlines, custom animations, collaborating, custom shows, and setup and annotation. We can go ahead and talk about smart art. Smart art is a really nice way to express what you're trying to say in the form of an infographic. Now notice the difference between the two. On the left, we're able to kind of break up the animation for the smart art group here. And then on the right, these came in all together here as well. Okay, so at this point I can pause the video if I want to. I can go ahead and kind of, um, I can stop it at this point, which is what I'll do. I'll go ahead and stop it here. And I'm going to go back here, go back to my first one. And if you take a look on the bottom, it's giving you the timing, right? So, so the total recording is a minute and six seconds. But for this first slide, it's eight seconds. My second slide, 20 seconds here. And my third slide is 38 seconds. So if I want to, I can go ahead and replay it. Maybe I'll just replay the first one here. And notice it's just kind of going through the presentation automatically here. I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just accept all the defaults here. I'm going to click on the X and close this out. 
And so now if I was to run this in presentation mode, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so there you go. That is how you rehearse your timings, and that is how you take advantage of using the screen recorder as well. So once you have everything set up, whether you're deciding to use the, the recorder or to rehearse your timings, go right back to that recording, to that record tab. And now you can go ahead and export this as a video. Let's go ahead and click on this, this link here. And you have some options. You can create a video. Just notice a few things. You can go ahead and establish the, the, uh, the size. So right now, this is full 1080. Um, you can change it to a lower resolution if you want to. This is kind of the internet standard, 1280 by 720. And if you want to go ahead and use the timings and narrations, you want to make sure that you, right, make sure that you go ahead and interact with one of these options here as well. And then finally, if you don't have any timings, okay, or if, if you don't even have any recordings, it's going to automatically spend five seconds on each slide. So if you want to just, if you don't want to use timings, if you don't want to use a recording, you can come in here and you can just go ahead and adjust the timing as well. Once you click on create video, it's going to ask you where you want to save it. It's going to save it as either a Windows Media video or a MP4 video there as well. So go ahead, you have some decisions to make. Do you want to just create a video from your presentation and go ahead and specify the timings automatically? Do you want to rehearse your own timings and then save the video? Or do you want to go ahead and record it with the voiceover as well? Go ahead and spend some time playing around with those features, and then come right back. Welcome back. Well, that was a lot of fun taking a look at the advanced features of PowerPoint 2021. Hopefully you were able to pause this video often and practice some of the learning outcomes that we discussed. We talked about customizing the PowerPoint environment and working with the slide master. We talked about inserting audio and video and being able to format and edit those objects as well. We talked about some custom animations. We learned some tips and tricks along the way, such as adding a navigation button on each slide and using the new zoom feature so that we can kind of navigate back and forth in our presentation. And we talked about the importance of just kind of reviewing your presentation before you go ahead and deliver it. Well, I had a lot of fun. Hopefully this was fun for you as well. And hopefully you have a lot of takeaways from our lessons from today. I look forward to seeing you in a future Learn It tutorial. Thanks for watching. To earn certificates and watch our courses without ads, check out learnitanytime.com.